Hi, good evening. Welcome to the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting for February 24th. Um, I'll start by uh, entertaining a motion to open the public hearings that we have in front of us tonight. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Secondly, I'm going to make a public uh, service announcement. Early voting is a thing now. People can vote during the regular hours at Town Hall. Um, and the primary is, of course, on March 3rd, if you choose to wait for that day. Um, and then Gary will be a little bit late because he's cheering on the Hopkinton High School ladies basketball team in the run for the championship. So good luck to the Hellers. All righty. So um, let's do the administrative items first. John, you want to do the approval not required plan that's been? The approval not, re the approval not required plan submitted for uh, Stony Brook is being withdrawn. They have a uh, common driveway special permit coming up later in March, and they want to do that at the same time. So they're just going to hold off so that the 21-day um, period doesn't elapse before they get on for the special permit. Okay. Do we have to take any action, or they have to vote to allow to withdraw? Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to allow the, the applicant for the Stony Brook approval not required to withdraw. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 How about that sidewalk survey update? So currently we have uh, four paper copies from both the Senior Center and the Library. However, we have 290 online responses. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we have some uh, good results. Haven't gone through it. I just kind of, uh, kind of summarized um, going through, but nothing in detail. And it looks like there's some good responses. So. Did we put an end date? Is it closed at it's, this point? No, it's still open. I, we, uh, we didn't have an official end date, but we figured leave it open for about a month. Okay. So uh, there is a sidewalk survey out, uh, survey out there online and also available in hard copy. So please do um, fill it out um, if you would like to help us understand better what the town's priorities are for sidewalks, sidewalk improvements, or sidewalk installations. I did take it today. Nice. The survey. It, 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 if you take it on your phone, it is a little confusing on the first question because it lists three columns and you can't see the fourth column. And it's like. Yeah, I got that same feedback from some people. Yeah. I can't remember when I, how I took it. I must have done it on a laptop because I don't think I read. Either that or I did it wrong on the first question. I didn't even you, you can't because you have to answer them. Oh. <laughs> so the first question was tricky because you're supposed to rank them, but Google Forms doesn't have a ranking function. Right. So that's actually the official Google way of making a ranking question. Okay. So we tried to make it as clear as possible. But I, I didn't have tricky. any trouble. So. Other than that, it was fine. All right. So we should have an update on that at the next meeting, probably, with the results maybe time in there. Or... All right, so we do have one set of minutes, um, January 13th. Are those the minutes we wrangled about last time and you had some changes to, Deb? Um, they're actually not the version that's been updated, so we may have to wait another week on that. We may have to wait another meeting on those. Um, can, you, can you detail the updates? Cause I, I did detail them and I sent them to Stephanie. I don't have them right in front of me. Okay. Um, yeah. And and yeah, we didn't all have a chance to review them so they with the updates. So. Push forward. All right. So um, I, then I think I will invite um, the folks from Maspinock Woods to go ahead and come forward. Um, sure. Thanks. Welcome. Good evening. Hi. Uh, for the record, Peter Barberi, also Bruce Wheeler. Hi. Um, if you recall, uh, the last time we were here, we were also in discussions with the Conservation Commission in the nature of uh, the changes that cited uh, or the cited five West Elm Street. Uh, there's two major areas of kind of wetland jurisdiction. Uh, so West Elm Street along the bottom, there's a wetland area that's all in here, and this is the conservation 50 foot no disturbance line. And then the other significant area is the vernal pool offsite here, and this is the commission's 125 foot vernal 
pool, no disturbance area. I think you have a plan that reflects the existing dwellings kind of right in here. Uh, so when we met with the Conservation Commission, uh, they asked us to look at reductions to the impact area, to the areas of jurisdiction, both in the nature of the building itself uh, that we were proposing, as well as the uh, basically the site now up beyond the septic system is all kind of cleared out. So it's all been altered from the viewpoint of the, the buffer zone for both the uh, wetland area as well as the vernal pool. So they asked us to look at what we can do to, to kind of, in addition to reduction in house size, uh, restore a lot of the area that has been historically developed within the, those two jurisdictional areas. So what we did was we moved the house substantially up front. We kept the required under zoning 25 foot setback from the property line, 50 foot from the street. So if this lot were to stand on its own in the district that it's located, it meets the setback requirements. The issue is under your special permit requirements, you're supposed to have 75 feet from property line for dwelling setbacks. Now, excuse me, 100 feet. Uh, you waived that originally with the, the original approval in, in the condo units up top and also to some extent recognizing this. So what we did from the viewpoint of the Conservation Commission under the existing condition, uh, the house has 850 square feet within the 50 foot no disturbance buffer zone. Uh, we reduced the area of that by moving it up so that the only area that's within the 50 foot is that. So we reduced that impact by 29% by, uh, over what's existing. From the viewpoint of the house construction within the vernal pool area, again, there was a significant area in here. Uh, so from the vernal pool area, uh, we reduced the size of the building within the 125 foot vernal pool area by 23%. <coughs> from the viewpoint of an altered area within the 50 foot building, no disturbance, uh, we reduced that area. Uh, by a little less than 400 square feet. But the biggest improvement was restoring the budget area here and on the other side, particularly up and back in here from the nature of the vernal pool. So we reduced the area of alteration within the vernal pool area by roughly 1,900 square feet or 21%. So by moving the building up, we cut down on the building within the 50 foot no disturbance in the vernal pool area. So, we just got word last week from the Conservation Commission that they want us to file a whole new notice of intent. We gave them these sets of plans a couple weeks ago. Uh, we think we will have that filed by the end of this week uh, with a hearing date sometime in March. So those are the site uh, conditions and the improvements we're making by proposing new construction on this site. And do you want to talk about the architecture? You want me to? Okay. Uh, so from the viewpoint of the architecture, we created a new style, being that this is a single unit. All the other, as you know, all the other condo units are, are duplex units. Uh, we had some original meetings with you. We had some original meetings with the design review. Uh, we met with the design review three or four weeks ago. Uh, they had some comments in the nature of the sides of the building, uh, which we'll take you through those. But again, this would be all the same materials and styles and everything else that is part of the original development. By reducing the size of the building, the, the first floor usable area is about 1,000 square feet, which is three to 400 square feet less than the other things that have been recently approved for the buildings. Uh, the total area is 2,400 square feet. The last numbers that have been approved for the individual units are 2,700, 2,800 square feet. Um, and the reason it's so much more is because we have created, as you'll see, all usable space above the garage. But the, this footprint is, is about a thousand square feet. So again, we kept all the materials in the design consistent with what we've done. Again, that's the same depiction you just saw. On this, this doesn't reflect, but one of the items that the design review wanted to do was different materials in here. So this is a different style 
shingle that's set up than the rest of this to create, again, a second level of alteration. But this would be, as you're coming down West Union Street, that would be the side that you would see. West Elm? Yeah, West Union Street is here, so you're coming this way. Yeah. West Elm. West Elm. I'm sorry? West, West Elm. Elm Street. There's West no Elm, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. All right. That's my project on one on Thursday. This is the other side, West Elm. The closest abutter, uh, again, there'll be 25 feet to the property line. It's probably 30 or 40 feet of wooded area to the next abutter on this side. And again, with that 25 feet, we're restoring that and doing some planting to get that back to the, to the Verna Pool area where the house is. This is the back view, very small porch, which we kept both out of the 50 foot no disturbance as well as out of the Verna Pool area. Um, and just at the floor plan, again, main living plate door, two car garage, in this area is about a thousand square feet. Again, deck just outside of the jurisdictional areas. And where we're able to pick up the square footage is in the nature of the family room over the garage. So that's what it is. Again, we've got a power with the con farm. We'll probably take two months to get through that process. We're hopeful and confident that we're doing, seeing that we met both the reduction in the building within the two impact areas as well as the reduction of the existing alteration within the two jurisdictional areas. Um, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead, Frank. Can you review the earlier um, as seen from the street? You showed us two pictures of the same house, uh, same frontage, but... We haven't uh, done anything in nature of uh, planning. On the board you have right there, could you review back to the beginning when you were showing us the frontage from the street? Uh, he, you're not going to show us? Um, I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Sorry. Earlier in your presentation, you showed us two views of the frontage. Yep. Can you show us they those pictures? Yep. Yeah. One was the colored rendering. So I want to point out that the color rendering is sometimes what happens is we, we're shown a picture and it looks smaller, but it's actually quite a bit larger than the color rendering from the angle it's being presented. We don't see both garage doors in a full presentation. Um, so I just want to point that out because from the beginning of this project, uh, I might have been on the concom then, uh, the original house was supposed to be repaired and restored. Um, and I don't remember anything from the CONCOM or planning board where that has changed or been accepted yet. And I understand you're trying to do that. Um, but what I'm fearful of, uh, that Project Creep is happening. I know you weren't the original developer. Um, but the original things that I voted on over the years did not include this new house. And I'm, I'm thinking this house is a lot bigger, a lot bigger than it was originally intended to be from the beginning of the project. That's my concern. The, the original dwelling, the dwelling that's still out there, is basically an 850 foot, square foot footprint. And then there's the roof line just goes straight back, and you can see the dormers that are up there. So I think there's roughly 450 square feet. I think that was the number from the assessor's office. So the existing building is probably 1,200, 1,300 square feet. You're right. This one is bigger. Uh, but again, we weren't party to that whole thing. And in, in what we're trying to do is, is upgrade that area and cut down on the wetland jurisdiction, get some plantings, develop the whole thing in a better appearance than what could be left out there. That could be the case. It could work. Right. Uh, I'm just concerned about Project Creep. Um, 
and not to repeat myself on that, but there was a reason specifically why the original home was not included in the footprint of the, the homes that were eventually built mm -hmm. behind there, and that was because it was supposed to be restored, uh, and it, that was always the way it was presented at, for years. Uh, different developer, different times. We're open. I'm open to see what you guys can present. Yeah, Jane. So, basically, this new home that you're suggesting has the same footprint as the old one, or uh, the footprint? The footprint on the existing is about 850 square feet, and the new one, I think, is 1,002. So it's... But I meant the foundation, or it's bigger. Yeah, larger, yeah, it's bigger. The, the living room is the same, then we got the garage. Okay, well, thank you. I remember the old one, it wasn't that pretty. This is much more. Another chair, can I uh, just... Uh, so let me just uh, try to level set some of the history. This, this development started in 2005 by a different developer, got, went through all the planning and necessary approvals at that time. From my recollection, the driveway was going to be where this home was going to be to this neighborhood. It was going to be off that little street and not off of West Elm. And right. The original approval into the development was going to be there. And I, I, let me just stop you for a minute. And, and, and I went back and looked at that, and apparently the decision was made to bring it around the side. Again, I wasn't the attorney involved. At that stage of the game, probably what should have happened is this lot should have been pulled out of that development because it's a lot that can stand on its own. The open space and everything else associated with the same lot would meet all your requirements. But for some reason, it wasn't. And I, I be honest with you, I don't know why. It, looking at it, that was my first reaction. Why didn't? Why wasn't this lot separated and left on its own? Because it meets all zoning requirements. The location, everything can meet all zoning requirements. You were never going to have even the existing building 100 feet back from the perimeter, which would be our zoning requirement for that development. So as it stands now, there's the, the setback requirement from wetlands of Lake ba Maspinock, the backside. There's setback requirements from Vernal Pool and the setback from the street requirements. And then there's the existing house, the existing foundation. As it stands today, without any relief and approvals, can that house be built as is? Or is there, what's, what can be done without approvals, I guess is? Well, you can, you can fix up the interior and you continue to maintain the whole area and you're now, 9,000 square feet of continuous impact of the Vernal Pool area rather than, rather than 6,500. Yeah, you could make use of the existing lot. So you could basically tear the house off, it, off its foundation, rebuild the house on the existing foundation, and that would be it without approvals. Yeah. The original you, the it wouldn't make sense financially, but theoretically you could do I'm that. I'm just trying to get an idea of what we're, right. what we're trying to decide here. Right. A nicer home with less impacts to both uh, wetlands areas. Um, so that we're trying to balance all that out. Create a better product, less impact to the vegetated wetland, less impact to the vertical buffer zone, um, uh, which has been our discussion with the Conservation Commission. We wanted to give you guys an update, complete the process with the Conservation Commission, and then uh, uh, come back and, and share with you how that uh, process uh, finalized itself. Okay, thank you. You're good. I was just gonna add, I hear the concerns about how they were supposed to originally rebuild the old house, but with the old house being right back in the middle of the wetlands, I think this does seem like to be a better option to move it um, out of the wetlands. And it's an right now it's an eyesore, this would be an attractive house and it's a same, similar size to other houses in the neighborhood. So. Uh, although I understand that wasn't how it was approved originally, I, I think I'm comfortable with moving forward as long as Conservation Commission agrees that it's okay. I, I think, um, again, I would agree that if Conservation Commission thinks this is a better option than leaving things as is, because I was just wondering, you know, is it, is it really less impact on the wetlands if all that disturbances going on to tear down the first first uh, house and then build the new house still impacting wetlands um, or I, and I don't know the science of it I mean I'm, I'm going to leave that to 
Conservation Commission, you know, whether or not that really is better. The one other thing I did not mention is somehow or another, if you look at the old CONCOM in York plans as well, there's a trail connection out to the development that actually comes down and is shown in the wetland area. I don't know how, I don't know why it's shown on the plan, so we don't show it here, but it's part of that, uh, and again, for additional benefit to the CONCOM, we're looking at kind of moving that to the north, I guess, in, in creating a little more buffer between the walking trail and, and the wetland. I mean, there was an so emergency moving, access. Hold on one second. Moving the trail, just to clarify. Yeah, that. just moving it. Out of the wetlands. Again, right now it's like right on that edge, and in fact, a piece of it is on the wetlands, so we'd move it over probably 10 to 15 feet to the, to the north. At one point, and I forget exactly what's happened over the years, it was emergency access because there was only one entrance way into the development. But I think that'll be another improvement that we'll ultimately show to the CONCOM as well. Um, I think the, you as the developers have gone above and beyond um, what's required to make this um, new project, new old project, um, <laughs> re, re alive again. Um, I think you've taken into consideration the views around the periphery that people will see. Um, and the potential restoration of west wetlands that had been destroyed and an impossible building site, an impossible existing mm -hmm. structure. Um, so I, I'd be, I'd be in, uh, positive with moving forward, but I do want to state, um, in the absence of our vice chair, because he may say this as well, uh, Gary, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to put words in his mouth, but um, he may say that we do not want to make it a standing decision to, to, to um, kind of go into wetlands and to, because part of our, our, our battle cry is to take those kinds of things very, very seriously. And, um, but here where it's been sacrificed and we're talking about restoration of wetlands, I think um, we can make an exception. So I have a question. I don't necessarily, I, I, I have a bit of a struggle with it too because it's an existing previous decision that has changed over time and it's just, it's a bit of a tangle. Yeah. Um, and it probably isn't a set of waivers that we would have entertained on its face um, if we'd had the first shot at it this way, right? Um, but, but, and the, the previous decision does waive the setback requirements, and the way it's stated is to preserve the house, and I think that we all agree that the house is not worth preserving, and there may be some benefits to moving it out, but I would like to be clear that um, what the process is and what waivers are needed. I feel like this is a, this is a new decision that we're making, and I want to make sure that we um, entertain the appropriate waivers um, and we articulate in our decision that this is you know that we don't intend this to set a precedent, and this is in response to a very complicated set of circumstances. Because I don't think we would we I, I don't think this planning board would look at this to do this. On, on its face, if it was this was a standalone question. Yeah, we will get you kind of again that survey plan as we're going to give to the CONCOM with all the jurisdictional benefits, both in the nature of the house and the thing. We've got the numbers, we haven't put them on a plan yet. Uh, and again, I think with those improvements, and, and again, I wasn't around at the time from the viewpoint of the reasons for, for maintaining no. the old house, it doesn't fit in certainly with the development we've got in yet. I that's honestly part of the condo to pay condo fees and everything else associated with that. Then, then this makes more sense from the development perspective. I think it has to do with the entranceway that ultimately changed. Yeah, I think right? it did shift. Um, so, uh, so CONCOM is your, is your only hurdle besides us? Is I'm sorry? Right? CONCOM is your la the last hurdle besides the planning board? You're, you're through with the design review? Yeah, the design right? review I think is all set that one of us can yeah. make that change on the side of yeah. the building. Um, and I also appreciate that it is... Um, it, and while it's a little bit bigger, it's in keeping with the neighborhood as well. <coughs> and um, just on its face will be a significant improvement to the structure that is there. Um, but 
What are the, yeah, go ahead. Chair, I do have a question though, because Frank did raise a, a legitimate point. If, if the access has anything emergency vehicle wise changed because it is a single access into the development next door, has anything, has, well, the, the, does the fire the, department need access? The approved plan for the development did not have a roadway access through here. It was only a trail ultimately that was there. So the access that is up, the so new there, access. There is enough for an emergency approved. vehicle to circle around in the existing. Uh, not through here, but the other way yeah, in is all there is. That's why yeah. it comes in and there's the loop, there's loop so that you don't have more than the 500 okay, feet. Okay, so that's distance. been resolved. Okay. Right. Mayor, just to follow yes. on to your question, and maybe we'll yeah. ask John. I don't see the number, any of the waivers listed in here. Is it just one waiver for setbacks, or is it multiple waivers? It's um, a good question. <laughs> okay. This was something inherited by yeah. me. So I, I, I feel like it's going to be a, a bit of a complicated it's, set of waivers, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, it's waivers in what fashion i mean it's a, it's a site facts, plan right? and then it's you're approving the site plan and then you're approving the amendment to the special permit right. so but it's not it's not waivers as in like a subdivision okay. plan where they have certain requirements that they have to do and you can okay. grant waivers to that it's it's a different animal thank you right but there was a waiver for the for this 25 foot right. setback so right. that is a waiver you had to grant. You had the right to do it. You did it to 75 for the rest of the development. Uh, but again, this house was a lot closer than 75 to begin with. And, and right, again, I said, we may ultimately look, depending upon how we can deal with the condominiums, trying to separate this and create it as its own lot, at which point in time we back to amend that special permit and take it out, prove to you that all the open space requirements are met and everything else have a restriction from the viewpoint of the ongoing maintenance of the trail through this site to get to there, all those things would be satisfied. Um, I think the, the waiver specifically states to it, for, for the purposes of preserving the house. And the I other one is 75 think that that's, feet. So. I think that that's why I, I just want to make sure that we, we make sure that our decision satisfies, it is very clear going mm -hmm. forward. Because I think that we aren't waiving it to preserve the house, right? We're now waiving it so you can build, tear down that house and build a new structure outside of it. We've got to come back with a final plan, so yeah. you and I can make sure we define Just make everything. sure, yeah. Um, the only other question I had is the underlying zoning of the whole parcel is the same? Or, or we don't know. Is the whole zoning the same there? So it's under a, a garden apartment special permit? Yeah. We've just been the continuing the meeting. You've got 90 days after the close of the meeting to make the decision, <laughs> but if you need any type of an extension, we can certainly get you one. The underlying zoning was residential B, but it's being permitted as a garden apartment in residential, which is different yeah. than yeah. this, this okay, one right that's here, correct? Yeah. What's that? Is it this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, so it's in residential B. It looks that's like it's different than the rest. And this is all yeah. Okay. So it's different than the rest of the correct. development. What is the rest of the development, John? RLA. Our residential lakefront. And I should also point out, I don't know if this changes any uh, decisions, but if it were to be pulled out separately and be a standalone residential development, it wouldn't require any site plan approval. It's only because it's a part of the garden, uh, garden apartments that it requires the site plan. Right. Um, but you wouldn't situate it, you wouldn't be able to situate it, or you wouldn't choose to situate it without. Well, we couldn't come back to the change by without an amendment to the special permit taking this lot out. By the time we did that, you would have approved this as part of this process in what you see. So we'd be, we, and we have no problem signing a recordable covenant that says whatever your final decision would be, that would be applicable to this lot so that nothing could change. Okay. So when do you see the CONCOM next? Uh, I suspect maybe a two-month continuous to get us through the CONCOM period. Okay. And, and if they make any modifications, we'd have to show you the modifications of the site plan. Uh, we haven't done a landscaping plan as part of that approval, so when we come back, we'll show you that as well. Um, March, April, May is coming. Who is, who is able to vote on this? You're not able to vote on this. Maybe April. The end of April? I would... Uh, Hustle when for April, <laughs> May. May. Yeah. 
I'm um, just just to avoid having you know probably choosing to start over it, it would be administrative but um, so I was looking at the outline too and I noticed that we didn't finish stormwater management or site lighting does anybody remember what are the open issues the um, about stormwater management there were issues from the people that live in the community right now and then uh, those were going to be addressed where there's some siding that come loose there's some questions about some of the um, basement cement areas that were questionable when we were looking at what were they 23 and 24 when you come in the ones right to yeah. the left across yeah. to the first ones that were built uh, there were concerns with some of the people there and the nature of the size of the, the roof uh, leaders and everything else, all that has been changed, all the landscaping stuff, and again, we're talking now back in July, all that stuff was settled out. I don't know if anything has become an issue since then, not that we've been made aware of, uh, but I think everything is, is was settled out then. Okay. Uh, I drove through the site tonight. All the buildings are now under construction, so there's construction activity going through. Um, <coughs> but, you know, the hope is to be done with the whole project this year, Come September, everything is done, and you know everybody's happy. So there, there were a couple of people that had expressed um, concern with uh, erosion from the roof runoff, and uh, we we went back and and moved and seeded uh, uh, all of the areas. So we, we went through with our with our group and uh, and moved and seeded shortly after that. That, that sort of, we had that growing season, that uh, late spring, early summer growing season. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we began seeding again in the September season uh, to, to boost that. Um, so it's improved significantly from uh, uh, when we had our meeting and we had two residents come and express concern most of which was uh, 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 erosion from a uh, roof runoff. Okay, I remember, the I remember on, this, on the site walk, yeah. Um, so I also recall that there was some foundation cracks that they were concerned about as well. So that was on, in the pictures and I just wanted to know whether or not that was addressed as well. Well, the, the foundation cracks um, uh, weren't leaking any water. So there's, there are, it's, it's normal for foundation to have cracks, and uh, uh, we went and looked at them, and there wasn't really anything to do. If uh, uh, if water shows up and starts to uh, penetrate, then uh, something would be addressed. As long as you uh, but there, they were did they were examine common, that. They were common. They were relatively common cracking that we see in okay. concrete, um, but. Uh, oftentimes that can be uh, uh, concerning for you know, people who are looking at their basement and wondering if this could lead to a problem in the future. And I, I think that was the nature of it. Yeah, and, and I also think that was combined with the um, runoff. They were concerned that there would be leakage. Yeah. Right. Right. If it wasn't drained yeah. away from the house, then it could get in. Yeah, yeah and, that's oh, been taken care and of. There, and there were areas that um, had eroded um, from uh, the roof runoff uh, that have been uh, stabilized um, since since those meetings. Thank you. Uh, oh, perfect. On, yeah. On the foundation question, yeah. um, do you happen to remember if the cracks were vertical or horizontal? Because I know there's a difference. Yeah, they were vertical. Okay. I think that's just settling cracks. Yeah. I think horizontal is the one to be more concerned with. Yeah. Well, let me just uh, take a moment to ask if there's anybody who came tonight to speak on this hearing on this project. Okay, so seeing that. Um, so when would you like to continue to, because two oh, months from now. Whatever your last meeting is in April. So we have a meeting April 13th and April 27th. Both of them are wide open. Over the 23rd, we're hopefully. 27th. Oh, 27th, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, that's okay, so um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to April 27th. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. And the 27th is at Town Hall because of a conflict? 13th is at Town Hall. 13th is, okay. Thanks 27th will be here. No problem.
All right. Um, I will invite the uh, Hawkington Tennis Club to come on forward. HTC. To conditions. HTC. I have so many acronyms flying through my head with my new job. I can't HTC. even tell you. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you again. It's been a while, and we've been busy. <laughs> um, I'm Bob Green, a representative for uh, project owner Donnie Satterfield, who lives here in Hawkinson. And uh, we've got architect Lula Bayo and uh, Jesse Johnson, the site uh, plan engineer from Bowler, with us this Good evening. Morning. And just to give a quick recap, uh, as I'm sure you know, we uh, basically worked through the entire list the October 24th that was generated from the October 24th, uh, 2019 beta review process. Yep. So uh, the one thing that uh, was remaining was on page two, which was the SD2 regarding documentation from the uh, fire department indicating uh, emergency access around buildings being uh, acceptable, etc. So, since that time, we have had over six hours of meetings on three separate occasions uh, with uh, fire code and building consultants, uh, architects, site engineers, and of course, um, several different entities from the town, uh, ranging from uh, John, uh, right here to uh, Chuck Kalick and uh, his department and uh, also we had uh, public works at one of those meetings and uh, who am I forgetting there were a lot of people fire in the room we, we had, of course we department. had the fire department <laughs> and uh, we had uh, air structure engineers from uh, the horizon company as well at one of those meetings so the result of all of this is that we have actually addressed 31 items related to um, fire code and life safety uh, related to this project under six different sections. And our most recent meeting with the fire chief was on Thursday. And uh, we've been uh, going back and forth to, to finally uh, clean this up. And he has had an opportunity to, uh, hopefully you correct me if I'm misrepresenting anything, Steve, but. He's had an we've had an opportunity to fine tune it and uh, filter it uh, to the point where uh, we felt we could be back here to uh, uh, present to you folks and uh, obviously hoping to uh, uh, get uh, uh, some approval uh, to move forward with the project. So thanks. So we just got handed new plans. Do you want to tell us what that's for? I think we should let uh, Jesse uh, talk about that. Uh, so it provides a plan set to give you the latest and greatest. It shows some of the changes that we had made to address the fire department's concerns. I'll give you a highlight on the site where we made some changes. The first one, probably the most important, was I was asked to have the entrance widened to allow for a fire truck to be able to enter in case somebody was at the stop sign trying to leave the site. They didn't want the fire truck to be impeded by coming in and knowing that Lumber Street isn't the most wide road. So we modeled it with a truck on the edge of the pavement on the outside and widened the driveway by four feet. So now we have clear space coming into the site. That was 
I'm just going to say that traditionally we hold very firmly to our submission deadline. Um, all of these changes are to accommodate the needs of fire safety and the changes there. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Right. Any questions? Uh, uh, not about uh, fire safety, but um, one of the things we've talked about a lot is the getting getting to this facility, having children being able to walk there. Where what progress has been made on a sidewalk to the facility, if any? Uh, the sidewalk, I believe, it has to be put in as per the original uh, master plan. So the sidewalk is is mandatory. We budgeted for that and actually have been expecting to put it in. Now, I don't want to go into the weeds here, but as you recall, last time we had kind of an informal anecdotal discussion on what that sidewalk would look like. And it would be obviously preferable to have it be a, a standard type of sidewalk. Uh, but, you know, there may, may be some options there. Uh, we, we talked about uh, some kind of raised uh, platform through the woods or something like that. And that will all have to be addressed at, at some point in the future. And as uh, also, as you recall, when we had this discussion previously, I suggested that uh, this would possibly set up, uh, let me use, use the word adversarial, but perhaps a, it would be a needed discussion because the planning board might want that sidewalk to look different than what the Conservation Commission would like it to look like. But uh, in the larger, view of, of this project that if that's our worst problem we'd be happy about that uh, so that's uh, hopefully that answers your question you're the chair yes page 15 of the memo has that sidewalk all the details of the sidewalk in it where, in it's, crossing, where it's crossing multiple crossing the street multiple well, times this this was no. what else came up in the discussion Robert um, because I think everybody agrees in principle that uh, in terms of safety, uh, it would be uh, desirable to oh, not yeah. have that sidewalk, uh, not have to cross the street once, let alone twice, uh, uh, to, to serve this. And that's actually what triggered what Mary was talking about. That's what triggered the discussion on having the sidewalk and getting it on one, the same side of the street. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to address that. But uh, obviously, from our perspective, safety and a construction perspective, we would prefer to have that sidewalk run down uh, Lumber Street on one side coming down from uh, the uh, 77 West Main Street uh, development. And just to elaborate a little bit more on that, I believe uh, you guys will, will be attending a trails committee meeting. Yes, I, I actually attended the trails committee meeting and we had discussed uh, uh, several possibilities, and, and our uh, owner would be very happy to uh, join up with the uh, the uh, trails uh, network. And as as you know, I think I brought this up previously as well that we are, I'm going to say, to the edge of the school property, about three quarters of a mile. And so that is a reasonable distance to allow access from the school. Uh, my discussion uh, with the trails committee was a preliminary nature we we it was more of a conceptual agreement type thing we thought this would be a good idea but no detail was discussed with regard to the construction of the trail what the materials would be uh, or, or anything of that nature thank you where would you, uh, thank you for bringing that up where would you connect to the school property so there is there is talk of a trail coming back through right near the Mastriani property yeah. Yeah. of a new trail coming back that way. So coming in the back of their property. It all connects. Yeah, yeah. I I did go talk to Paul a little bit about that, and and uh, Kathy suggested that uh, they were going to talk to the trails committee as well, and there was something they were going to get involved with trails around the Chamberlain development as well. Correct. Might make sense to. Collaborate on that uh, all yeah, at absolutely once. Absolutely, mural. Yep. I think it's just important to get an easement or a grant of approval for the concept because there's a chance the town could get a trails, mass trails grant for the construction. Uh, yeah. It's, it, it's very important to get that um, 
agreement, you know, an, a, a, at least a memorandum of understanding that we are working together to get some sort of trail system. Well, our, our disposition on that, Jane, is that the uh, Trails Committee owns that relationship, and we would be more amenable to working with them and maybe even acquiescing to where they would like it to go rather than us trying to tell you where, where it would go. Because you may know. I don't think I'm just saying where it should go. I'm just saying that in, in conceptual, just as you're saying it's a conceptual. Oh, okay, thing, I understand. You know, that um, just as a broad concept that you're willing to give some sort of easement through their property, wherever it may go, because I'm sure Conservation Commission will have a lot to say about it as well. Yeah, and we need to figure out where it's connected to. Mm -hmm. And that, I think it's about con conductivity and, um, you know, the whole broad, you know, package. Uh, it's just a, it's a memorandum of understanding, just that we would work together with you to, to some point. Yeah. To make this and we're wide open, better. wide open to that. Thank you. Thank you. Would the decision condition that, that work or I potentiate think, that work or? I think that it, it could be some language in the planning boards, just so that it would be a broad conceptual plan that they would continue to work with the Trails uh, Coordination Committee that this broad concept, um, just a, you know, future planning that yep. this be brought into it. So just so this language is there. So they don't have to actually build the trail. I, I, I can't speak for the Trails Committee. Um, that's not but just that there is this um, perceptual and beneficial in, in all directions. And yeah, right, yeah. working with the schools. Yeah. So they, uh, I, I, if, those can, if, the, if the students I can get to your saying, facility. I, I, I see this as a no-brainer. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, I think it's important to have the language there. No, I agree. I think, I, if I might interject. I'm going to come around the table. Okay. So just to finish up on the trails thing, I'm not sure if you're looking for all input or just trails input. Any input. Okay. So as far as the trails, um, these guys have been very helpful in working with us. So I, to your point, let's capture it in writing and just, you know, nothing nothing crazy. But um, the um, the issue we have actually was crossing a strip of land from the uh, end use, yeah. you know, mixed, mixed use. They have a pathway back there. so. We're on board with Mastriani, we're on board with these guys. We just have to get across that one little area. So I'm glad you brought that up, David, because this may require cooperation also with the, uh, the Sportsman's Club. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So this will be a, yeah. a multiple group. And we may have to loop around. Yeah, we. Keep our distance. Idealistically, we'll, yeah, we'll keep our distance from that one. We'll, we'll try to go, but you never know, because Mascherani's got some trails going along the whole way, so our big concern is to get access to you guys. You know, mm -hmm. to, good, to, good. Okay. Uh, it's, it's awesome that it's, you know, a vibrant uh, subject of conversation that everybody seems to be agreeing that it makes sense to do, so. Thank you. Um, they actually asked the questions I was going to ask, so um, we're kind of all in the same mind. I think a lot of, about a lot of this. I think the sidewalk should be only on the east side, and hopefully that can work out that way. Um, I think you guys put a lot of time and effort into this uh, in response to our concerns. Uh, you worked with our fire chief. Thank you, Chief Slayman. Uh, put a lot of extra time on, in on this. Um, you should be on the planning board. <laughs> um, I'm I'm very pleased that this has come along. It's, I know it stalled for a while. Now it's back, and I'm I'm looking forward to voting for it. Thank you. Um, I think I'm mostly okay. Um, I, so we have a condition on sidewalks. We don't mm -hmm. have. We need some sort of condition about trails, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I, I think it looks like it's great. Yeah. Um, yes, and you know, I'm really, really big on the sidewalk being on that side of the street um, and I will come to every concom meeting that this is about <laughs> so, so so just you know I will I will speak at the common hum as as needed to support that so well we're hoping that it, when we're ready to go forward with this that we can have kind of a team meeting a cooperative working session at least that's how I think it would be best approached I would be very I would much really in favor like of that. to avoid so. 
anything that resembles acrimony yeah. uh, around this subject, if at all possible. Nobody's looking for acrimony, indeed, and we're happy to support whatever yep. works best um, and what is safest. And I think the content was going to be similarly mild. I think so, too. I, I um, would uh, ask for a step further um, that in the site plans, so not <coughs> a, 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 note, a side note in the writing, I would um, think it would be really nice in this overall plan where we, we've already drawn West May and we have the overall site that uh, we put some kind of a dashed line saying future sidewalk. It's just a dashed line, but it could, you know, very much on the east side, it could just symbolize that, that that's the intention and that's the thought. And I think here it's, a very, it's very important to show it. Actually, we do have a note on there, uh, extension of sidewalk. Can you show me where? So it would be good on this front page right there as well, in that front it a, uh, piece. It covers then, that. Look, uh, this is this range. Which plate number are you on? The layout plan. What page? Three. Three. I can see that, but I can't see these little <laughs> tiny letters. <laughs> Can you point to it again so we can get it That's awesome. That's awesome. I, what I would, if you get back on this drawing and there's that opportunity to do that, I would extend the dash line up the side and put the arrow, another arrow, um, going in the opposite direction so that it's got that. It sort of has that grander approach. And then what I would do, um, if, if, if it's okay for me to have input here. Before, then, um, sorry, I, just before you go further, before you get off this one, can, can we show it up there just so I can see the dashed line? I'm having a little hard time following it. Yeah, maybe a darker line too, or, or high, you know, bold, bold out letters. So what'll end up happening too for timing? That's worth mentioning about the sidewalk yeah. is we obviously have to do a full design on it. It's got to go before Conservation Commission for perming. It's also got to go obviously to the DPW for their review and approval. So we'll get additional survey. We'll do a conceptual layout of the sidewalk. We'll meet with the DPW, get their buy-in, and then we'll formalize it and submit it to conservation. So we. We can't do anything. We won't even be able to go for a building permit. Right, but maybe what we need we is a, a little bit out. of a holder, or either either an, a block with those words a little bit larger, or a heavier dashed line, just well, sort of a little. What I'm bit. saying is, I'm going to get you a fully developed plan set that it's going to be so much more detailed than this. This is just indicating that guess what, guys, You're, you have to do a sidewalk here. It's going to happen, and any contractor is going to know this is where my work ends and he might not get the contract for the next portion of it, but it's indicating that you guys are safe and that it says we have to do a future extension of the sidewalk. It's also going to be in your conditions and okay. I'm going to get you a fully engineered plan that's suitable for submission to the Conservation Commission in the state for review. Terrific. I would still, I would still like push you to increase the size of it just so that, you know, the commoner can, the commoner can see what you have going on and what your plan is. So I'm to the chair. I'm just trying to, I'm not asking for anything different. I'm just trying to understand this one. Yeah. So is it the dotted line that goes across the street? No. Can you show it, can you show it specifically the dotted line? So what we're showing is there's, we have concrete sidewalk on the site, but then as soon as we get into the right of way, we're transitioning. Can you, sorry, can you just trace the line? Which one are you talking about? That's the end right there. So he's right on the sidewalk of bituminous sidewalk being installed along the right of way. So we're actually already heading down the street and permitting some sidewalk down the road outside of our property limits. Right up to, see what that telephone pole symbol is? Yeah. That's, we stopped it right there because that's where we got to figure out what to do with. We got to go around that pole somehow and I don't know okay. what the impact will be going towards the west. Okay, so it's a very thin deadline. It's not the thick one that goes across the street. No, the thick okay. one is actually the limit of work. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's indicating that we're going to have to rip out asphalt or disturbs okay. some existing condition. Thank you. I think that what I'm what I'm trying to push for a little bit is is just that statement, just what you said. You know, the intention is we're going to be taking out bituminous asphalt, you know, and to 
if that, if that great outline is the end of is the end of the asphalt to extend it up or to put a, a brake line intending the fact that it would would extend all the way up thanks Yeah, what I'm going to suggest is that um, you leave it open to work on some language for the condition. If okay. If we need to um, okay. draft something. Okay. Yeah. Um, just for the record, can I have the fire chief give, uh, just share with us your blessing? Have you seen the, I assume you've seen these new plans or? Are you limping? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I saw the plans. A great uh, cooperative effort here. Uh, quite a few uh, conditions with this site that just made um, us deal with some code issues later. I really believe that we got to a better place. I hope we've uh, gotten you to believe in that. Um, most of these are code requirements. They're not the fire chief's ideas there. Yeah. Uh, but we work together to solve some stuff that we need here. Um, structures, and uh, it was a great team. So I appreciate their, appreciate their well, we appreciate that uh, you took the, you know, you worked this situation through because it's way out of our expertise, so appreciate that. Okay, is there anybody here that's here to speak on on this project? Any abutters? Anybody from the public? Okay. John. Any, uh, any final thoughts or? Nope, I think uh, everything was addressed up to this point and the fire chief uh, talked about the one remaining thing, so I think. We're in good shape. The only thing that we did have open on the um, the agenda is uh, noting the town department and boards. Do we still have open the board of health permit issue? Are, are you in front of the board of health? Or? No, they've issued a permit. I'm sorry. They've issued, they've issued, issued it. That's all done. Okay. Um, and uh, and then the trails, and I think that we've talked about that. So does any, anybody have anything more? Okay. So yes. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the uh, landscaping and the trees. Yeah, absolutely. Is it now okay? Sure. So can you guys pull up our John? Can you pull up slide eight? Please? Yeah. Slide eight. I, I, uh, I used to be able to look above you. <laughs> I apologize if we it's already closer. talked about this and I don't remember, but I was just curious about the tree locations. Can you just speak to where the trees will be going, the like major trees, please? So those those circles, pretty much with the s sticks, for lack of better words, going okay. through them, those are tree symbols. The spokes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, so there won't be any tree plantings in the back of the property, just That's all right. the time? That's right, right. Okay. Because it's basically out of sight, out of mind, and you have the all natural vegetation Okay. Us. So you don't expect to be clearing too far back, so. Okay, great. Uh, just one other comment on that that relates to the fire chief in a discussion that we had previously. Uh, we want to be uh, reasonably far away from any tall trees coming around the airstrips. That's a safety issue. And that's one of the items that came up when, when we were meeting. Sounds fair to me. Yeah. Thank and you. Also, you know, just as a side note, uh, we we're probably, given that this is a community project, we'll probably try to work with uh, uh, Western. Uh, nurseries on this project and get them involved in that aspect of it. So uh, uh, that's awesome. That's really good news. We always love it when uh, our community partners are working in partnership, obviously. Um, additional or new comments or information? Um, no comment about that comment. I'm sorry. No. There, there are several other gardening places in town as well, and one's across the street. That's what I'm thinking. That's your <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> there is. There's one almost across the street. That's true. And all the, all the, all the places in town are excellent. Yes. So people, I, well, well, I don't want to waste too much time, but some of the people I've talked to suggested that the Western Nurseries have some kind of special rhododendron that they developed. <laughs> Their legacy. And it's the a legacy. species that they invented. So I thought that might be cool to have a unique species as part of it. So if you haven't seen it around, there are the purple bushes all around in the spring, and they're, as Jan said, um, PJ Emson and named after Peter J. Mezzet, the guy who invented them. If the weather stays like this, we're gonna switch to palm trees. <laughs> okay. 
All right. So I think that, um, John, do, uh, do you mind walking us through the decision and the findings? And I sure. think that it sounds like we are ready to move forward. So this is an amendment to a site plan. And so the decision criteria is uh, relatively simple. It's the site plan conforms to the master plan special permit, and the site plan conforms to the site plan standards set forth in section 210-136-1. There haven't been significant changes uh, to the site plan itself that I believe would change the site plan standards. But these are the existing conditions. No, these are the proposed conditions. These are, are these are conditions from the previous approval, it is. updated to yes. this development. Okay. So the only other one we would talk about adding is um, if we put in some language about the sidewalk that Deb mentioned, and um, just some comment on trails and the, the plan for trails. Correct. And you've had a chance to walk all through the conditions and you're comfortable with them all. Yes? Uh, I, I haven't you're seen where they've changed significantly. They haven't changed significantly. We think this whole project has changed favorably, if anything, uh, in terms of impact. So. All right. So I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the special permit with the proposed conditions as outlined. So, so moved. So. Correction, it's a site plan. Site And we plan. should probably make findings first. Sorry. Finding that it conforms to the master plan special permit and find that it conforms to the site plan standards. All right. Oh, that's before my outline. That's my confusion. So, um, so in, on the matter of findings, um, a motion that we find that the site plan conforms to the master plan special permit and that the site plan conforms to the site plan standards set forth in 210.136.1 of the zoning bylaw. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And then, um, and then I will entertain a motion to approve the amendment to the approved site plan. Is that waivers right? first. So they Where? didn't technically request any waivers, yep, but here. two waivers were granted for the previous Previously. site plan. So I would assume they would also still need those. And, and we I have to re-vote those? Uh, yes. Um, no new waivers are requested or required as a result of the plan modifications. The previously granted waivers listed below are still necessary. The Town of Hopkinton Zoning Ordinance, Section 210 I'm very sorry about that. Um, Section 210 136 de, uh, point one, letter M, sidewalk shall be provided along the entire frontage of the subject property along the existing public ways. And Section 210 136.1 N to allow for pole mounted lights that do not conform to the site plan standards. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the waivers as previously approved. So, so moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any further notes, John, or on to the site plan amendment? On to the site plan amendment. <laughs> All right. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the amendment to the site plan. This is section 3-3, or, <clears throat> sorry. I'm not in 3-3. 3-9-2? 3 is where I am. Okay. Three nine two, page 14, it, it begins the proposed conditions. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the um, the amendment to the approved NMU site plan oh, with the conditions as listed and discussed. So moved. Second. Did you want to add the two conditions about the sidewalk and the trails? I did. In the discussion, we're going to do that. Yeah. Thank you, though. If you can make sure. We that was my understanding. Yep. Yeah. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, can I just ask, D Deb, did you have to sign something before you vote? She's already signed it. She's already signed it. Okay. So everybody, ex everybody can vote. Uh, except except Jane. Jane. <laughs> just wait till you are you wait able to vote on everything. I'm in a desk and I'm pushing. Good call. 
We've all gone through. We've all gone through. through it at different times. She's in a planning board. Pur you're in planning board purgatory. She's appointed. Planning board purgatory. Mid, mid process. <laughs> yes, she's in purgatory. <clears throat> yes, but we appreciate her. <laughs> I, I take that back. Um, it looks like I don't know if you signed the form for this one. Um, it doesn't say you did, and Jane is eligible. Jane is eligible. I was I'll confusing board. it with Masperox. Okay. And Deb may not be, so it probably makes sense to. I thought I had seen it I here. I thought that. I had signed it. Uh, it I says it doesn't say. So Kobe is usually pretty good about this. And Muriel and David filed MMCs. Deb missed the 1125 meeting, but it doesn't say that you signed an MMC. So. No. Okay. Let's let's. I think we're going to be fine anyway. So. I think I did. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Yeah. What? Do we need to add? Do we need to add? Yeah. What? What, what, are this, what? We wanted to add a couple conditions, and we wanted. To yes, we talked we about that. We're going to put change. language in about the trails, and the the clarification on the sidewalk. Are we going to do that after? So we're going to vote and just. Yep. We just yeah. It, have this. We create the decision. Yeah. We have a trust factor. Okay. Yes. We're going to vote first and then draft the final conditions. Yeah, which we do. We do typically. These are the proposed conditions. Okay. And then, but if, would you like to draft something now on the fly? No, it's the big thing. To, the big thing is something we've talked about previously. It's just the crossing of the street. Like it's it's only what a quarter mile, and having to cross the street is not really great for kids coming from uh, that development right there on so the could, corner. Chair, sure, I think there is some verbiage in there. I'm, it I'm says, absolutely I'm happy to check questions. and make sure that that's in there. It says, however, may I read it? Oh, it? So this is the second proposed condition. However, in lieu of constructing the sidewalk to the south, the applicant should construct a sidewalk along Lumber Street to the north, connecting to a planned sidewalk network. Specific conditions are related. So I guess it doesn't say on that side of the street, but there's also a bunch of it verbiage. It implies that it could, yeah. Yeah, it could happen. Right. Yeah. Even though that's not what we want. So, so we're just yeah, yeah we're just yeah we're just taking a I step agree, further agree. In, in coming up with verbiage that to change the the drawing note to be specific and then to also have it in the memo for about the trails so we're just being a little bit tighter so, hold on one second I'm writing something and I'm I'm not hearing what you're saying so hold on one second um, so I'm adding the condition to work with the trails coordination committee and the sportsman's club to connect via trail the trail network to the school property. Okay, Perfect. so that's the one. That's the easy one. Go ahead. What was it? I think uh, to Rob's point, I, I agree with him. Now I didn't see it in here about uh, particularly having the sidewalk on the east side of Lumber Street. That would be specifically. I know that. No, it makes sense. No, but it's conflict yeah. with some of the concom. That's. I feel the same way. In fact, it's it's same a preference, way. but we don't yeah. know because engineering is needed and further discussion. At worst case scenario, I think that they would have to build a. Right. Well, I think we much rather have the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. all but agree on that. Yes. Right. We know that we have to do it. Definitely that. But we all agree that our preference is that it remains on the east side of Lumber Street. And I think uh, while there may be some people who aren't in this room tonight that might want to disagree with that, I'm, I'm optimistic that, as I suggested previously, that somehow when it comes time to deal with that, we can get together and, and come up with the uh, the, the sensible uh, a sensible outcome on that. It may have to be a boardwalk of some sort. So, then it comes so is they to okay with the disability side. issues with the boardwalk? So I so I I appreciate that you kind of hung in there with the point because I'm not sure that we were all getting it. Um, are you comfortable if we put in the decision that we want we are mandating it be on the east side of Lumber Street. What you're trying to avoid is conflict, right? I understand it it, it well, complicates things, but it has I, to I be on like that side of the street for safety. I mean, our job is safety. So even though we agree that we all want it on the east side, I would hate to see the language be such that it shuts down the project if somehow uh, if somehow I mean, it's difficult to first to there agree, can be agree no to agreement with the, the, the concom or something it's like that. difficult to agree to language that's out of our control is that I mean the yeah. decision ultimately we'd be more than all of us absolutely go, go on record that we want it on the east side we'll do everything we can to to, to do so but it's beyond our, our our ability to approve that there there are other jurisdictions with engineering and with uh, concom that are going to have to have some input in that 
Um, to Robert's point, other point that he made. Hold on one second. Uh, the uh, boardwalk or elevated walkway type of project could be constructed to standards that would accommodate uh, handicapped if necessary. Absolutely. Okay. Think of it this way. If you went down to Hilton Head Island or somewhere, how they have those big wide boardwalks going through the mangrove swamp, yeah. that it would be that type of uh, right. arrangement. We would prefer to do a standard sidewalk, obviously, going up the east side, but it can be done. It can be done with special treatment on the boardwalk and certain so I'm sorry, I want to make sure, it can, what you're saying is it can be done it staying be on done. east side despite the wetlands challenges? Correct. Yes, that's what I, I wanted to make but sure I was understanding you. application well, uh, is dependent on Conservation Commission. Even an, even an elevated boardwalk would require conservation. Correct. Yeah. Right, right. right. We, uh, we, understand that, we understand that my, it, it, it bumps up against the CONCOM and they'll have to be on board with it as well. Correct. Yes. One last point. So if, if the sidewalk is a situation where from that development it crosses the street and then crosses back, the, back across the street, you might as well not have a sidewalk at all. Have Agreed. no stipulation. Totally. Yeah, no, I, I, well, nobody's arguing with no, you. No, okay. yeah. I just want to make it perfectly clear, like, yeah. that's the reality. I agree completely. To agree. Totally agree. I think I have a suggestion that will solve our issue here. Uh, in the findings, not the findings, the... Conditions. Conditions, thank you. Can we state that um, the sidewalk will be on the east side of the property if this is not feasible, that the uh, applicant will come back before the planning board? Well, they'd have to anyway, right? Well, just to, uh, yeah. I think it would make them happy that it wouldn't, we, we're not looking to hold oh, out the project. The, the way, as, as I suggested previously, the way I see this playing out is that when it comes time to deal with this, we need to get representation yeah. from the planning board and the con com. Yeah. Actually, similar to what we did with the rest of the town and, and the fire department to work through those issues, uh, we actually kind of developed a, a very good process there that we could probably replicate right. to resolve this issue. Right. I'm not opposed to that at all. We, yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. And we totally agree with you. We're just trying to find wording now that will allow us to move forward and yeah. vote on it. Yeah. Would, would the language, uh, would coming back to planning board be limited to that issue at that point, or would it be open to all other issues? Just because we don't know what the makeup of the board is. What board's is going. the process? So there? my it's major or minor, right? My concern with that would be, if you require them to come back before the planning board, but don't specify what they'd be requesting, it's kind of vague. And if yeah. you required them to put a sidewalk on the east side and they couldn't, they would have to come back for a site plan amendment to right. change that condition. Right. Um, there is a process. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's. I mean, I think we're okay. We just need to alleviate their concerns. Right, so, I mean, would you be okay with the process to come it back? Does, yeah, it doesn't alleviate. I mean, that, they understand that, that that's what happens. If we mandate the east side and the CONCOM is, is stuck on not the east side, then they definitely have to come back. I mean, that, that's what we know. I'm okay with that, but are they okay with that? I, I, just, I just don't know if there's any, if anyone here in this room has any kind of knowledge of the CONCOM judging conservation versus safety so in these we, type of matters. We, we can't decide for them anyway, even yeah, if we I had, know. we'd be hazarding a guess, and that makes no sense in the, in the process, to be honest with you. But I have every confidence that another board in town is going to do um, the most sensible thing with the challenges of the development. Why would they not? Maybe. Steph's going to add a comment on sidewalks, and I agree that it would, it's better that it be on the same side, on the east side, but I live on Grove Street, Route 85, and we do not have a sidewalk on both sides of the street, so my kids literally cross the street, walk another block, cross the street back, and then walk to school. And it's not ideal, but it, we have these situations in town, some places where that's just how it is. So I, I understand if we have to do it the other way, we'll have to, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's the end of the world if we had to have kids cro people cross the street. It's a little, it's a little, I'm a little yeah. conflicted on that, to be yeah. honest with you, because that's, that's an existing situation. Like, I wish your kids weren't yeah. experiencing yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I almost watched my 17-year-old get plucked off the planet yeah. because he, he was stupid, but because of that whole dynamic. Yeah. Um, and, and you can see, you, you and you see, can see the whole see way, the that's distance. right. You, that's the issue, is you can see the distance. It's not, it's not something far enough where you can't see the, 
Yeah. And I, 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 I would I, prefer it on the east side, but I, yeah. there could I be think there would put a, it, would, it would impose a very serious limitation in that we almost wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to even commence the project, and it would almost be almost like we haven't gotten a planning board approval if we have to if everything is conditional upon that sidewalk because it's again it's an item beyond our control. So, so uh, I, I where, think, where are you in the in the concom process? We're done with we're the concom process. process. So why? The is, sidewalk. Is so the sidewalk is <laughs> uh, you didn't talk about the sidewalk with the concom. No, because it's it's a lot of frankly it's a lot of extra effort and money to design that. That if this project doesn't go forward, then why expend all that other money for basically a stage two of the project? So we need this to be okay and getting approval and some nods to then be able to go back to the client and say, okay, now we're asking you to expend this much more money on survey, engineering, and permitting. That is yeah. really the two separate projects. Yeah. The other part of that is that we were uh, have been uh, traveling. All along under the impression that because it, it mandated that the sidewalk needed to be done in the original order of conditions that uh, uh, to that point it was addressed and as I said before we all know there is going to be a sidewalk okay anybody else on this side weighing in so let me just ask yep. and I, I would say we, we shouldn't word it in such a way that they're forced to come back and get an amendment to this condition so we could say you know the planning board strongly that means, that means or very, very yeah that's strongly. the thing I don't think we should put anything in because just a strong recommendation is not a condition <laughs> so I think the wording you read is fine yeah I, I kind of agree with I mean if, if we don't plan for a sidewalk on one side of the street then we're not doing our job we're not I planning agree. I agree so I feel like very uncomfortable without having some Bridge in there, and we all know Lumber Street. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Yeah, yeah. I'd say there's uh, two big differences between Grove Street and Lumber Street, and that's because um, Grove Street is heavily residential. Grove, um, this section of Lumber Street is not, and I think the traffic flow is extremely different. And I think um, specifically because there's no fog lines and no yellow center trail uh, line down the middle of the road. The traffic flies, and to Bob's point, yeah. I think if you're going to have a lot of trucks, even children, um, yeah. this this is an attractive an attractive project. Right. Families want to send their and children to it. One question I might ask, I don't know the answer, but the wetlands where there may have to be a boardwalk, how much of a distance is that, and that is that actually um, a huge cost difference? that, um, you know, comparison-wise, sidewalk versus boardwalk, you know. So we it haven't got it fully engineered yet. Yeah, we, really we have to get the wetlands, yeah, yeah we have to get the wetlands delineated again because it's yeah. been over three years. So we'll have to get that updated, then the survey done, so we know where the edge pave is, the edge of the uh, wetlands are, and then obviously the topography in between. So then we can start to really figure out, because what conservation is going to be, wanting to know is do you have to fill in a portion of the wetlands or even create shade over the wetlands with their, which they're right. And there could be a lot of different variations. Right. I'm not sure. And what, not. We, right. And what we looked at last time was were there any locations along there where you could get sight lines and have to make a crossing? Well, it wasn't going to be planned crossing where you just put a couple signs up. It would probably have to be something elaborate like if you ever are gone to Kimball's in Westford where you've got one And taking your life into your own you hands. Know, yeah, I have been the, there. Right. I've been there many right. times. I go there right. with my family. It's If it's a known area where crossing, traffic starts to understand that, and when you have those big flashing lights that you can press the button and get them activated. I mean, there are certainly things that are acceptable safety standards today if we absolutely had to. But let's play worst case situation. We had to propose a filling in of, say, 300 square feet of wetlands. We would be asked to replicate probably one and a half or twice that or something to mitigate that. That's probably what it's going to come down to. That's going to be the negotiation. Right, right. Um, I don't think that um, planning to put up big flashing Kimball style lights is really the direction we want to go. And I think from my perspective, using Grove Street as an example, I mean, if we were planning Grove Street, we'd do it differently, right? We wouldn't have people crossing back and forth. Um, we, don't get a, we don't get a, we don't get a chance to go back in history, right? 
Well, it's also, it, it, it you know, it came up over time. tend to travel as fast. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Hmm. On Lumber Street. Oh. Lumber no, Street. It's the same situation yeah. on Hayden Road toward like Milford and Tesla. It is. And it's, it is. Yeah, no, there's a lot of But they go faster. Stuff. Yeah. No. So it sounds like there's a lot of... I do think that um, when push comes to shove, we have to plan for safety. I see you over here writhing in agony. Frank. Yes. I'd like to answer Rob's question about the con comment. I was on it for three years. What they usually look at in, in matters like this, he mentioned, the replication, whatever's disturbed. They look at what's pre-existing, pre-disturbed, and whatever improvements can be made. And then safety is a factor uh, that we consider and CONCOM considers. Uh, but they're, they're looking for protecting the wetlands, and we're also looking to protecting people. So I think they'd be open to hearing the, the ideas as it presented, and hopefully they'll understand that we have a preference for the east side of the road. All right. So uh, I think that, that but. Yeah. So uh, we're, can I just have a show of hands, people who are um, in going to hold fast to the notion that it has to be on the east side of the road? Do you mean in voting yes or no? In the decision. Are we putting it in and mandating the east side? <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who started it's, this whole thing. I'm just, just looking around there, Rob, just waiting to see how, you, how strongly you feel. <laughs> I am really torn. I, am to, uh, I, I have other questions. That would be, th if it doesn't, if we don't mandate the east side of the road, it would be three street crossings within... That's a very short distance from the, where Hopkins Tennis Club is going to be, and the intersection at uh, West Main. I, I I think for safety reasons. I, Wait, did you see two crossings? No, the, well, there's already the pre the pre-existing one, right there where you cross from like Starbucks to uh, to um, oh, the Dynasty yeah. at, at right at the road. on the other side of the road. That's what you're saying. Yeah, crossing. I know. Um, Right, there is a there is a law that says you can't have so many. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't have so many crosses. Crosses. Yeah. Work out. I'm not sure so where we are with that process. It, as I as I mentioned previ previously, way back when we first started this, when we when we first started this whole thing, that uh, this is one of those aspects of the project that was previously approved. So it's already there. Um, I would really like to avoid any language in this that holds up the project that will further stall this project. If so, a so to be clear, that. we know you've said that, and we are not in insisting, and we're not having this discussion to hold you up in any way. We I understand. understand. We understand the complexity. Is there? I, I will just say this. Obviously, you own the relationship. We. Uh, if, if uh, good faith goes a long way, or any distance at all on this one issue, I can, I can say this with, with certainty, if not high confidence, that we are going to do everything we possibly can to get that sidewalk on the east side of Lumber Street. Appreciate that. So a point of clarity here? Yes. In the conditions, it says, it specifically says this Master located in this master plan overall development plan dated August 20th, 2014. Do we know what that all that plan looks like? There's lots of verbiage here. So I was actually just looking at that, and if I have it correct, it's this plan. This one. Master plan overall development plan August 20th, 2014. I did not see anything about sidewalks except for up here. So it says pr proposed sidewalk connection here, but it doesn't necessarily show anything unless I'm missing it along the road here. Along Lumber Street, as shown on the site plan from the site driveway to the driveway to the Huffington Mews, the location shown on the plan, blah, 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 blah. I think I think the dilemma is we all want this project to move forward, but I don't sure think we do. want it to move forward at the expense of safety. Is the is the concern? I don't uh, think they do either, right? Yeah. 
And I truly believe in um, Thomas Jefferson's hat as not being as not going above it. It's an old Philadelphia term. Um, but then in you know 2005, um, they built above it. It didn't matter. So I really think it's important to have it in the verbiage. You know, and I love a gentleman's agreement, and I really like how consistently, strongly you've stated that, and I tru truly believe that's going to happen, because I think we have a lot of concerned citizens, both on the CONCOM and here on the planning board, but it'd be certainly nice to have it stated, you know, in a very simplistic way, you know, similar to what you started on the drawings there, but perhaps in more of an um, implied, connective way. Um, that would would just follow through with our good intention. I think that's what we're looking for too. Okay. Some level of language that will, some level of language that will uh, that will capture the intent of what we all agree on. Yeah. But will not be uh, a barrier. I mean, I think we've demonstrated that any any issue that's come up that the owner has controlled, we've been willing to uh, to work with the board, work with the other departments to provide that. This one issue, unfortunately, we don't have control over. And that's, that's where I think our concern is this could set back the construction of the project, you know, three, four, five months, and, and, and that's our concern. I, I could I know, I throw this out there. What if the condition stipulates that we submit a formal application with the sidewalk designed on that side? So that you're making sure that we're going to put that's what we're going to put in writing, and that's what our application is going to be before the Conservation Commission. And then after that, obviously, we're subject to the commission and what they vote on and, and any input they take from you guys. But you're, you would be forcing us to at least initially design it that way and, and put our best foot forward. That, make, that makes sense. That kind of pulls it away from all this. Well, that everything also, else go forward, right? As long as that would, uh, in a legalistic sense, kind of separate that and compartmentalize it outside of the main project, if we can if we can agree that that's the intent, I think uh, that makes sense. John? So just to make sure I'm, I'm understanding this correctly, it would be to require them to submit a revised layout plan showing the proposed sidewalk on the East Main Street, or on the East Lumber our, Street? Our initial, it won't be revised. It'll be basically be our sidewalk design will be submitted with the sidewalk on the east side of To the, the ConCom or to, to the, the Conservation? To the ConCom. Because it's their jurisdiction. And, and that will trigger what we talked about earlier, which would be the working sessions to uh, I mean, I, I, not to throw a wrench into this, but I, if it's if they submit it and then it's not accepted by CONCOM and they have to revise it, they wouldn't necessarily have to come before planning board because right. that's not a plan approved right. by planning yeah. board. But yeah, it would be a DPW jurisdiction and conservation. So, that's, so if you want to say DPW and CONCOM, I mean, I would, my suggestion, if, uh, if allowed, would be to, if you wanted to have this, it would also be based on the approval of the public safety departments, fire, uh, police, DPW, and get their sign off as well. Writing something to see if it works. <laughs> if so, I work. A couple of changes. Uh, Gary, would you like us to start over? While Mary was writing, if I, if I may, I think it's a good suggestion by John because I'd be comfortable with the, you know, the, the, um, Police, the fire, and the DPW because they'd be ensuring safety. Right? Yes. Um, Comprehensive. All right, so what did you say? It, it, uh, Jesse's plan to submit as he as sidewalk on the east side to CONCOM, and I guess it could either be that plan or if the plan was determined not to be able to only be on the east side that any future plan have the sign off of fire police and dpw yeah yeah 
so it's upon the conditions of a design submission for the east east side sidewalk within the jurisdiction and approval of the safety of the safety departments so i wrote uh, in the interest of safety the planning board and the applicant are in agreement that the sidewalk shall be designed and constructed on the east side of the roadway if at all possible the final plan must have the sign off of fire department uh, police department and dpw yeah, as long as the if at all possible is yeah. in there, we're, yeah. we're good. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not toying with anybody. Yeah. I, we're, we're all trying to we, circle the we, same wagon. We fully understand how this is a difficult process when there's all different yeah. jurisdictions involved, and we appreciate that. How does that, that work for everybody? I like it. I like it. Sounds yeah, good. actually, I think the uh, okay. that was worth that, that was worth pounding out for sure. PPW and FIRE will actually support uh, the desired result. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. That's, that's, the, that's the wording then. All right, appreciate it. So, so the um, conditions that we added are that the applicant shall design and submit. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm about to mess everything up. The trails one. Yep. The condition to um, that the applicant will work with the trails coordination committee and the sportsman club to connect the pro subject property by trails to the school property, something along that line. Yep. So one additional yep. condition. And then the other one that I just read, in the interest of safety, the planning board and applicant are in agreement that the sidewalk shall be designed and constructed on the east side of the roadway if at all possible. The final plan must have the sign off of fire department, police department, and DPW. I like it. Okay. I accept a friendly amendment. For those conditions, okay. I don't even know who moved. And so you moved, and who seconded? I can't remember. Let's have a second. I seconded. Did. I seconded. Okay, but we're not sure. But we're Deb not can sure. Can vote. Deb can she vote. can vote. She can vote. We are sure. Deb can vote. Yeah. 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 All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. All right. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. for Thank you. sticking with us through that. Thank you very much. You gained two new members through that entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> you need to vote to close the public hearing. See you again. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. And I'll entertain a motion to close that public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain as well. All right. We have a new public hearing um, for the preliminary subdivision plan for Leonard Street, Box Mill Road. So I'll invite that applicant to come forward. Kindly take a minute to introduce yourself and then your proposed plan. My name is Dave Bakkerdan, Rick Barbera. Is this new material you're passing around? First off, my left ear is infected, so I'm not going to be able to hear too well. Is this new material that you're passing around? Yes. Is it new besides? I got a letter from town council copy on Friday. I was just able to put this together today. My attorney wasn't able to make it. It's not real, though. It's, it's been uh, in the town's hands for quite some time. So just to, just for the record, it's new to this, um, this public hearing, just to be clear. Correct. Yep. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say for the benefit of everybody um, that we entertain material that is submitted by the deadline. You can certainly speak to this, okay. but we'll need to make sure that we have the opportunity for the public to to yep, see it, right. read it, um, and we have a chance to digest it and interact with it again. Okay, perfect. To be clear, through the chair, I can't even read this. It's it's blurry and small, tiny type. And we're not discussing this. We're not even going to discuss it. So, okay, just want to be clear about that. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Richard Barbieri. <coughs> I, I built Box Mill Road. I have this a piece of property up there, Tom Terry's property. I have it under agreement, okay? Uh, I, mean, 
I intend to try and build two lots up there, lots number five and six on a parcel. Okay. Uh, you have uh, deeded right away exhibit A, which shows let me get this thing on. Which the, the first thing it shows that might not show up on TV. It's over here. It, it shows this all right away going down the railroad bed. That's a deed that you really can't oh, read. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Leonard Street. Yeah, that one there, okay? Yep. Then, then, then the second thing we have, we have the deed uh, to McBride's. Would you, you turn that over? The McBride property in 1961, an approval not required. And this deed references the right of way on both sides, the old right of way and the old right of way, showing that it did have a right of way on both sides. Uh, the last deed you have is a deed into Terry, which references this all right away. Are you are you walking us through the materials you just handed us? No, no, this is what you have up there. Okay. It, it, the writing is, is is there, but what I'm saying is the Terry deed up here, this is the all right away going to it. And that, that's a copy of the deed that explains it. Now, what, I, what I'm trying to do... Okay. What I'm trying to do here is to construct two driveways off a box mill instead of using this all right away and building a, a subdivision. It would actually be, this was an approval not required. It wasn't a subdivision when I did box mill. This would be the same thing. But what I'm trying to show you is that we have rights with this all right away. Well, on the Terry deed, it's, it's, it's called the lane. But th that's, th that's a piece of property that's uh, it, it's defined. Uh, the town records have historically and currently identified a space as a deed of right away, a non owned, non identified separate parcel, completely outside the lot boundaries of Tevin's property. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is just put two driveways off a box mill road that's there. If I was to construct this road, I'd have to put two catch basins down here, and the topography rises, so there'd be a big cut here. I'd have to put a retention area. If you can turn that over so I can show them exactly. The retention area, it's there now for box millers here. I would have to put it approximately down here. What, what my intention is to, to give this nine acres to the town of Hopkinton. Over there. And, that, and that would work if they let me put these two driveways here. Uh, it's a last look. First off, there's hardly any water here now because when I did box mill, I took all the water that was coming from here. It all pitches this way. It goes into an area here, an area here, goes into another area here, comes down here and goes into a four bay, then into a big retention area. That took the, the majority of all that water. So this is very little bit of water now. If I do just the two driveways in the houses, I can just put a small basin right in that backyard and require no, no other construction. Uh, these two driveways meet the fire department radius for turning into. I'm a little confused. Yeah, yeah the, the two drawings are upside Different. down from each other. So, if we could shed some light on it. Uh, this is this is the submitted oh, material, the floor, right? Yeah. Box mill subdivision is this highlighted green area here. Okay, this is the limit of box mill subdivision. It goes all the way out to the town property, goes all the way back. It consists of three lots. Lot one, lot two, lot three. Lot four is the remaining land of the nine acres. The Tom Terry piece that Rick has an option on is this purple piece right here. Okay, that's 1.3 acres. Yep. What Rick is looking to do is create lot five, create lot six, and Box Mill Road is this road right here in brown. Yep. He's trying to eliminate doing this, a typical road just like he did for Box Mill Road. Having frontage off of the Terry land, what we call in Terry Path, access to these two lots would come from the already built Box Mill Road through way of easements and property that Rick already owns. So we're looking to have frontage off of the street, uh, 
33,168 and a 33,000 lot here with funding and access off of Box Mill Road. So can I elaborate on that a little bit from the letter from the attorney? Because they said that that frontage cannot be used if it's not an existing street. However, I, I do like this plan, and I think we've talked about this a while ago. And I, I guess it would probably come down to, like, what net waivers would we need to be looking at? I mean, it seems reasonable, right? I disagree. Well, I mean, I'm just saying what I'd like to know, like, what, what do we, what's not... What are we not following here? What, what, what It'd be what, waiving the construction of the road, actually. What's that? It'd be waiving the construction of the road. It would require why, why a don't you have the lot frontage? Remind us again why you don't have the lot frontage out in Box Mill. Right. Why, why can't you have frontage? We believe we do have frontage in Box Mill. This is a long process. Uh, we were sent to the zoning board. Two weeks before we got to the zoning board, my attorney was here on another matter. The chairman brought him outside and said, you're at the wrong place, you have frontage, you have to get driveway access. Through talking to numerous, numerous people, they said, no, you can't have just driveway access, you have to have the road waived, the construction of the road waived. I agree with you. I built many, numerous times on paper roads where I just put a driveway in, the frontage was in on a paper road. But... The building department is, or whoever is not, I don't want to single anyone out. They're not agreeing that I can just modify the box mill road and add two drivers and use that frontage. So you don't have frontage on box mill for some reason? I don't have box frontage on box mill for these two lots, no. That's why. There is some frontage on box mill lot, but it's broken up by that private way, which I don't own. It's Which private way, sorry? That's the Terry Path. Oh, and you mean Is that, that the paper street you that, mean? Yes, that, right. that would be this piece here, that yellow strip. Right, exactly. but you own everything else but because I own everything you, up to it. I, yeah. actually, I actually believe I own to the center of that because when it's a paper road, each person owns to the center of it. To the chair, the McBride's portion of Leonard Street is a private way, and that has never changed. And if the, everything you just explained right now hasn't changed that. Can you show us where the McBride's home, Mr. McBride is here, can you show us where his home is on your plans? Because it, it seems like you're yeah, kind of that's right here. overlooking. Right. If, if this row was to be built, it would go right next to his house. It's really hard to see that. Can you guys point yeah, out? There it is yeah, right there. there, it is right there. Oh. Where is it? To the west, to the west of there. the yeah. Terry Path. That's, yeah. that's George's home right there. Yep. And that part of Leonard Street is private. Yeah, that's the old right away, correct. But it's a private road, that section of Leonard Street. C correct, J just like uh, the Terry Path is a private way, road, way, paper road, whatever you want to call it. But the, the old right away gives me <coughs> rights to that. I, I can go down there and improve it and put the road okay, in. But Leonard Street is basically a driveway for Mr. McBride and the home down the street that's also in the McBride family. So if you were to want to build, say, in my driveway, which is pretty long, yeah, you're saying you could do that. I mean, I don't. Understand. Oh, you'd be upset, but that driveway isn't his property. That's that's the that's the road, the paper road. But it's a private way. Correct. But I have rights to that private way. To, I actually. I don't understand how you have rights. To Tom the Terry way. has the rights to that private. It's written in the deed. It's a paper road. Through route. Tom Terry. Right. Tom Terry has those rights. Right. I, I don't think. That, I mean, I can't speak for the variety here, but I can't imagine they'd want the road there instead of the driveway or box. No, but maybe you can ask them. So through the chair, I think he's not proposing that. He's proposing sure. off of... Right. So I mean, it might be a mute. But the way I'm saying it is, like, well, I have this, hold so on, I can do this, on, but you have this, and you can't do that. Hold on one second. So um, I'm not sure that... Uh, so it, there seems to be uh, a, a question that has to be answered. Like, you went to the Board of Appeals, and then they sent you away. I, di I didn't go before him. Two weeks before the hearing, the chairman took my lawyer out in the hall well, during break or something, it was Jerry Ephraim, and he said, Jerry, you're, you're at the wrong place. You know, you, according to him, you have the frontage, but you have to go to planning board just to get uh, Box Mill Road said three lots to get that modified. But okay. then when we so, talk. So you know that we have feedback from the town attorney. Correct, I saw their feedback. That, that you do have to go to the Board of Appeals. Well. So that's, <laughs> I, I know, and I, I apologize for that. You, you see, I, okay. I, I would just, I, I have to disagree with that because. 
I built so many times on private ways where sometimes they just let you put a driveway in. They, they call it a frontage frontage. It's, it's frontage on a private way, which should constitute frontage. I mean, I, I read his letter. I just disagree with it. So, so, and I'm not actually going to entertain an argument with you about that. We yeah, are, no, I'm not we trying. Are, we, I, are, we are bound to follow our attorney's advice. So I get that. Okay, but, but you understand I where I am. Actually, I can. Um, first of all, let me, let me just let the um, yep. principal planner walk us through his feedback first. We have, we have a process that we have wandered far and afield from. So I had two comments, uh, and I think one of them mirrored town council's opinion that this technically doesn't have frontage on a constructed way. Um, there's a, a definition in Hopkins zoning by a linear extent of a lot measured along the street front. Everyone knows it, I'm not gonna read it. Um, but it has to be laid out and constructed to be in conformance with that. The other piece of this is that the town actually does have a process for a situation like this, where you have lots within a subdivision that don't have frontage they can have, uh, be granted a frontage waiver by the planning board. However, in that section of the bylaw, it says before that applicant comes before the planning board for a frontage waiver, they should go before the Board of Appeals to get a variance for that frontage. Which is exactly what town council Exactly. And so this, and even looking at it the way that it's drawn out there, sorry, Steph, this may be an amendment to the Box Mill subdivision because they're using land within the Box Mill subdivision, specifically lot six, so therefore, if they wanted to add these lots, they could amend the subdivision plan, get the, the uh, frontage waiver from the planning board and the variance from the Board of Appeals and do this as that, rather than doing an entire preliminary subdivision and then a definitive subdivision. But that's not the process before us. Okay. So there, are, there is a process in front of it that is possible. I, I, I understand that. Uh. <laughs> Leonard Street is a dead end street. And I, I, I don't want to say you people tell me the right thing or the wrong thing because I'm not a lawyer. I don't know who's right. But when we, we paid for everything, we were going before the zoning board. I'm the sorry? chairman, we paid for everything. We were on the agenda for the zoning board. All the neighbors were notified like a year ago. And they, they, you know, they said, no, you don't belong here. All you have to do is go to the planning board. I'm not trying to argue with anyone. I'm just being pushed both ways. I know. I got it. Can I ask for the dead ends? Yes. So. Leonard Street is a dead end, and Box Mill is a dead end. Are we running into the problem of not allowing dead ends off of dead ends? I th thought we had a, a rule that cul-de-sacs couldn't have other cul-de-sacs. That, that's already gone by, though. This is already, Box Mill's already built. Okay. Right, so basically they're, they're requesting that Terry Path be approved as a road but not constructed because it would be granted waivers for all road construction. But how can we have a cul-de-sac off of an RDA dead end. We, we had this wouldn't technically be a cul-de-sac. If I okay. interrupt, we had this when we did Box Mill, and it turned out that because it was already paper road, the town was forced to let it be constructed, not as a subdivision, as an approval not required. And to be fair, Box Mill was still paved in like the 19 somethings and had fallen into disrepair, but there's still some pavement along it that supported your argument. Yeah. On Terry Way, it's a, it's a driveway. I mean, correct. I have a question. Yes. Okay. I, I just have a question about the, the lots that you have. Do you own this portion? Yes. And do you own this portion as well? Yes. Or, or have rights to it. Yeah. So, but you're saying that it doesn't have frontage along box mill well, because actually, yeah, this right. cuts through it. Correct. And so you have this and this, but yeah. not that part right there that you don't own. Right. That's it. Yep. That's the only reason. Otherwise, you would have frontage on Box Mill? Uh, enough for one lot. Yeah, if that, enough for one lot. Right. If that, pay, if that road or paper road away or right, or right away, whatever we want to call it, wasn't there, and Tom, Terry, and I put our lots together, I believe we would have frontage for one lot off of Box Mill. One lot, not two. No. But it has, off of that Terry path, if we want to call it, it has two conforming lots. But you can't have frontage on that. No, no, I, I, no I count, if I'm saying, you know, if you counted that as frontage, it's two conforming we, lots. We right, no, I understand that, right. But I'm so just saying for her, right. So it doesn't matter. Yep. Thank so you. how much, sorry, to the chair, how much are you off by frontage? Like, what's your total frontage on box mill with those two lots? 
the one that would service the top lot, lot, uh, lot six, lot five, uh, has like 101 foot of frontage. It's in an RA zone, so that would be in conformance. <coughs> what about the it's lot six? Lot six, yeah, the frontage good. would have to come off that paper street. No, no, sorry. The question is, how much frontage do you have on box mill? None, None for that. No, 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 no. Quote, quote frontage. How much, how long is that? Yeah. It's about uh, uh, approximately 160. I understand. Okay. It seems like so Rick, 160 Rick plus 100. Rick doesn't I, I don't own that. Yet, so. Doesn't own what? Rick doesn't own that, that one you just asked about. That, yes. that right there. He doesn't own is, that. That's lot three of this already built for a house on the part house above. So there you go. This kind lot of. is part of this lot. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh that that's something. That's we didn't why understand. you don't have front edge. Those those hatched areas there is house okay. one, two, and three. Because I asked whether or not you yeah. owned that. Same okay. as this. Right. That when I sold that third house at the end of it, that Terry Road came straight down, so that. Up. So how could you get a driveway through that lot if you don't know? Keep, if you keep coming down with that, okay, that, that intersection point right here, if you can lower it a little more. No, lower. Lower? All right, lower go to the lower. right. That road, not that road, but my land went straight down, okay? Yeah. I gave, right, it went straight down there. I came here, I broke off like a 30-foot piece, and I gave it to lot three, and in return they gave me exclusive rights to that property that I'd be crossing which is, it's, it's not even part of the, it's so far away from them, it's nothing they would use anyways. So you have an easement? Correct. Oh, correct. I actually have exclusive rights to it, not just an easement. I mean, they basically couldn't even go on that property. But again, like I said, they picked up 30 feet on this side. Yeah, we're in a basement walk down. It was good for both of us. Through the chair, it would have been a lot easier on us if you, you had that whole property up front. All right, okay, so I, let's go around the table. Do you have any questions, uh, initial questions? Uh, I'm not sure what is before us that is to vote on. We, we have a letter from our town council that we can't move forward with it, so I, I don't have anything I can move forward with. No questions. Uh, Rob, nailed my same. No questions. Um, I'm just going to mention the, the drainage issues and water issues that we've yeah. seen. We've walked there and there are pictures in the packet, but otherwise we can't move forward. Yeah. I have no further questions right now. Okay, so let me at this point just invite uh, any members of the public who have come to speak on this. Yep. So we are the brides, and that half that he's mentioning literally is a strip of grass that we have mowed since the house that we built, which was in the 60s. It's always been just an area that's mowed. For us, when he built Box Mill, we had numerous conversations, we walked, and there was, we have a water impact anyway, and he assured us that there would be no more water, and I submitted pictures to the town of literally running water. It's like a stream coming from Box Mill, Box Mill through that Terry portion that he is now intending, that's my yard. And I have a couple of other ones that are the same, that there's a huge, my cellar now is flooded. That little area that he's talking about, that's the lane most of the time is flooded. And I feel like if I try to sell my property and I have this whatever it is that's supposed to be between my house and the house next door, how do I sell my property to satisfy whoever is gonna lend somebody money to buy that with whatever this road is. I don't object to him putting houses on Box Mill at all, but I feel like he should get his frontage from Box Mill and put it, put the houses. I don't, doesn't bother me if he buys Terry land, but I don't think the frontage should come from something that then didn't exist before and now exists now for him to buy more land. It's not like he has a burden of land that he can't use that he already owns. This is land that he wants to purchase and do something else with. And when the box mill, I'm going to sit down if you don't mind, subdivision went in, we were assured that it would be three houses. Now suddenly it's turning into five houses on box mill, not three. So I thought that before box mill was a dead issue, but I understand that now he's promoting it as a new subdivision. And I do think that the board should 
at least consider the impact of violence that have been. 100%. I agree. Could I respond to that just briefly? I'm sorry. Could I respond to that just briefly to water problem? Sure. The, the picture you're seeing with the water, turn on this right. Her house is here. You're seeing this area here, okay? But you just, just to, for the facts are the facts. This retention area, it's all sloped away from it, Keep, keeps all this water down this way. That water she's getting, like I said, this all pitches up. All this water is coming to her backyard. It's not from Box Mill Road, though. Box Mill Road has, if you want to, you see this is a big slope. It all comes into this retention area. There's a pipe that comes out of it, goes down to this manhole, goes down to that retention well, Where do you suggest that it is coming from? For her? Oh, where do you suggest it? We've, wa we, we've walked okay. that property. We've watched, we've watched okay, it well, come straight down. If I was to build these. From the general direction of Box Mill. No, I, I, I see the picture. I know what's there. I, I, we did test holes here and everything. Uh, if I was to do just the driveways, this retention area would encapsulate all that water. It would, it would act, I know nobody wants to believe it that lives there, but it would actually help out that situation. But that's a pre existing situation from this land here. It's not from Box Mill. If anything, I, and again, I know no one wants to hear it, we took all this water, and it all goes this way and down this way into the catch basin. So I think that the, the so we're 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 in a position where we don't we agree that we don't have a go forward position here. There's a process in place that you need to exercise, yeah. and I appreciate your frustration that you yeah. got yeah. turned yeah. away from it, right. and you need to yeah. you need to go back to it. Right. Um, but we are gonna when it comes back to us, we're gonna want to see how that water problem is is being addressed. Um, separately, like said, we, separately from putting in new driveways, right? right? Like I said, we, we've already tested this. We already already done dug test holes, and, and that that catches all that water we pitch into this. I'm, I'm sorry. Can I, can I speak through the chair? That that side of the stone wall is McPrice property, and the other side of the stone wall looks like it's that's this stone wall. Yeah. That's a wetland, and you're talking about building in a wetland. It's not a wetland. It's just a heavy it's rain. It's damage so, that's it, happened. Yeah, it's just a heavy rain. So I mean, like I said, we've tested in there. You don't know where it came from. It, it comes from right up here. All this water here. So you're responsible. What's that? Are you saying you're responsible? Am I? No, that's not my property. That's the Terry property. That water's been there. I don't know since the beginning of time. I mean. This is, it's a very wet area. Like I said, if you take a look at the size of these retention areas I have, we had to do a lot to hold all that water in there. But everything coming off of that gets caught in here. So. Let me just ask if there's anybody else that came to speak on this. Yes. All right. Who's been picking on the fire chief as he limps up here? I'm not exactly sure where we are on the process and We're not exactly sure. Either. Just observations. Um, the closest fire hydrant is at the uh, Grove Street, Leonard Street corner. Um, so I know that Box Mill was here before my tenures, um, but I'm just going to walk you through what I see as a fire chief. Is that uh, so? I have to take a supply line down Leonard Street. Um, I'm doing try to quite a bit of work with the town trying to determine how you can tell the width of and any chance to improve from Leonard Street. I don't have a good answer for you yet, but it, it creates the way uh, the public parks there and not knowing the width of it starts the beginning of what causes me some worries getting into either Box Mill or other areas uh, beyond Box Mill. Um, the distances I just looked on the maps and the proposals to get to the end of Box Mill or to get to the end of the other road that's on the plan is we're talking uh, about 950 feet. Um, so for me, it's a little over 1,000 feet of hose. In town, we try to not exceed 500 feet. So that's just a condition that we start to face. Um, as I get into the, uh, I think the question came up, this is the extension of a dead end road. And so for me, that's a challenge. Um, I actually tried to take the uh, ladder truck tonight into Box Mill just to get a little test and see how it went, just so I could have a feel. Um, with the swing into Box Mill was fine. We got to the cul-de-sac. There was a car parked in the cul-de-sac, which made it so that we couldn't do a turnaround in it. So then we have to do certain maneuvers to get out of it. 
Um, the challenge with that is it's uh, availability, having to back up a large piece of equipment in the dark. It's just not things we try to do when it's not an A&R and it's something we have some control over. Um, and uh, entering into Leonard Street, uh, again, I don't know if that fits in for your work, but Leonard Street itself, if somebody parks on the side, which is happening on the right, I'm not sure who's controlling it, so I'm trying to talk to the town about it. Just getting to these areas becomes a problem. Um, just in the risk assessment, I've talked to the planning board in general. The more houses you add to these areas, a dead end, in the way we written, have written the bylaws, it Else? You have to come forward to the mic, sir. Introduce yourself and your address, please. Hi, Chris Masters, Foreman Dirt. Um, I'm not in a butter. I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I want to buy one of the proposed lots, and I'm just kind of curious to wrap my head around it. I think to kind of summarize what I've heard tonight is I know there's a procedural problem. I get that. And if I understand McBride's, you don't. There's no objection to the two houses being built, just using the existing box mill road. Is that correct? Correct. I mean, I don't, I don't mind what he does. We, yeah. we actually can't have that going oh, on. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, well, like I said, that answers my question. So to me, it makes sense, or it doesn't make sense to put the road next to their house. It sounds like that doesn't make sense to a lot of people here. It does make sense to put the driveways off the existing box mill, but there's just a procedural process that needs to be followed. Is that, is, do I understand it? So I think, uh, and everybody around the table will clamor to correct me if I'm wrong, which I appreciate, honestly. Um, I think that you are, we are halfway there. I think that there's a procedure that has to be exercised, and I think that we have discovered tonight in our conversations that there is not adequate frontage available for two lots off a of box mill. Can I add on to that? Hold on. Because of that? Because there isn't, because there isn't the length of the road, there isn't adequate frontage for two lots. So I think there's a bigger challenge for the developer. And, okay, in addition to getting the variance, I don't know the term. Yep, the, and the procedure, okay. the procedural. So there's the procedure, and let's just say the procedure goes Rick's way. Yes. And he gets the variance. Yes. But then the next question would be, even on Box Mill, if this board would allow the two drivers, do I, is that, am I understanding what you're, Center. Yes, okay. yes, right. Okay. But I think that, that you know, all things being equal, we would rather that than carving out a whole different road. Yeah. Um, a different complicating factor, too, is the one that Amy brought up first and the fire chief just highlighted, and that's the length of what is essentially a, um, a cul-de-sac, a dead-end road. Yeah, I live at a dead-end now, and there's thousands of times more space there, but... Um, it, it actually, I'm just, I'm yeah. Just, I'm, I'm, so I understand. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay, and, and the water issue. And the water issue. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. And the water issue. So, so that, yeah, make sure he understands that, please. Yeah, there's also a concern with the, the drainage, the water issue and the water impact. That has to be resolved. That's an engineering issue, right? It sure is. Are we good? Yes, so. Oh, um, I got it. So what is the procedure for us? What do you recommend? Would you withdraw and... If he is inclined to withdraw, that would yeah, be... Yeah, just something. withdraw it. I'll talk to the attorneys and, I don't know, I'll talk to this owner board chairman before I file again or something because I don't want to file and tell me I can't go there again. So if I just may clarify that, it's, yeah. I understand you're talking to the zoning board chair, but it would be helpful for, to the board mm -hmm. to actually have a written determination from the zoning board as to why they're telling you that you shouldn't go before the board. Just having us hear from you say that he told you this, I don't think it's helpful for the planning board to make a decision. I mean, maybe they'll give us that, but they wouldn't back then. I mean, this thing, 
I waited nine months for town council to reply to a letter that they never replied to. I had a meeting last July, I think you were at, with the town manager because I was so frustrated because I couldn't get an answer from the town council. They assured me he'd get back to us. He never did. Now, when I submitted this Friday, I got a letter from the town council. That's how long I waited. I don't know if you have that letter. You must have because you were meeting in July, right? Remember the meeting in July, the letter yeah. to town council? That is not mine. You must have a copy of that, right? Uh, somewhere in the files. Yeah, you never, they never replied to that. Right? I know, that's what so, I'm saying. So we, uh, we, we feel your frustration and we share it. All right, because we're, you know, we, we would really appreciate if, yeah. if none of this had happened as well, because it hangs us up too. And we don't want to be any part of just yeah. slowing you down for no good reason. Um, but John is absolutely right. If for some reason, um, they will, the Board of Appeals legitimately decides that you do not need to go before them. There has to be some determination by the board. It can't just be, um, well, it just can't be the chairman, first of all, and it can't be just a conversation. All right, so I'll withdraw this and okay. figure out my next step. All right. Thanks for your time, everyone. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Sorry, just approve. one comment. Yep. Real quick. Um, and I don't know if this is the place or not, but when this comes, if this, assuming this comes back to us, can we just make sure that the minutes from the previous box mill approval are included in the packet? That's a really good point. Yes. I just want to go back and review yeah. what was proposed and what was agreed to then. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to um, approve. Withdraw without pre allow, allow, allow for the withdrawal without the prejudice. Withdraw without prejudice. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, I don't want anybody to get all kinds of scared and riled up. Oh, first of all, how did the Lady Hillers do? They lost. No. What, what game? What? Uh, basketball. What level, though? Uh, varsity. No, but I mean, was it like playoffs? Or uh, first round playoff. First round of playoff. They lost to Wayland. Yeah, you're welcome. Take care. Hopefully, we'll get that water issue fixed. Hard fought match. Yeah. But did they were not successful. Well I'm glad they had the opportunity. Yes. And I'm glad they, they played hard, right? I'm sure they did. Yeah. All right. Um Softball. So um, unless anybody wants to hang out longer, we could <laughs> conclude the proceedings. I want to hang out. <laughs> Are there any of the administrative memos that we wanted to discuss? Um and if we had a February 4th from, um, from Eversource to oh, the, yeah. so the firefighting. Those, yeah, those I just put in the folder so you can review them. I can add them to the next agenda. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, they're not on the agenda because yeah. we got them kind of late. Can I ask an administrative question? Did Please. we ever find out if there's going to be sidewalks on the um, meeting? I don't believe there are, but I, I didn't actually ask DPW. I will ask them. Was there a placeholder or? I don't know. Uh, and we're going to get an update. We've had a pretty good return, which you may already know. Mm -hmm. 289. And. Uh, 290. 294. Regarding Four. town meeting, I still haven't seen a notice about the zoning hearing. It, we, have, we have a date, right? It, it's been published. It's Jane actually got mailed the notice. All the abutters received it. It's been put in the media. So I'm supposed to get the media notices, but I didn't get the notices on that one. Josh, so. uh, jo the IT person said he sent it out to everybody. Yeah. So I told Connor I didn't get a thing, and he looked, and I guess we're not on the list anymore for eHub. But, but I also I know. But there's also this public Google group called the Hop Notices, and it's not on that either. So I just I really think it's important that it be publicized, especially there's yeah. going to be a lot of chatter 100%. about the solar overlay, particularly I think some of the others are less controversial. So I haven't seen it on Hop News or any place like that. Has anyone? I'll check with Josh. Or could you send it, it to us at least? Or? Yeah. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. yeah well, a little bit, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, the um, what about the the Legacy Farms Road, which is always on our um, agenda, and we have an updated cost. Um, Assessment or approval? So, yep. So uh, that is still before the select board. So that's, they make the first move. And basically, the only role that the planning board serves now before town meeting is to make a recommendation. 
on the acceptance. Right. Uh, so select board will do what they need to do and then refer it back to the planning board. They okay. haven't done that yet. So my question is about the bond. They set the bond with them on that or will the planning board does? That'll be the planning board. So the planning board will still have to go through this subdivision review process for the road. Yeah. And that bond will come into play then. Right. And once again, what is the timing that we need to do the review process? That can be done after town meeting. After town meeting. The road can be accepted and then the planning board can review okay. the road. All right, so there's there's no impediment for the planning board process in the in timing leading up to town meeting. So everything that has to be done before town meeting is done, is that right? Uh, so the only thing that needs to be done is select board needs to review, refer back to the planning board, the planning board makes a recommendation. So they so would need can, to, somebody to make a recommendation. That can be done because the, the plan has been the submitted. What are that they, process. they're reviewing the question? What is their review I don't know process? if they're reviewing anything at this point. It may just not be on the agenda. I'd have to check where it stands on that. Um, they basically review the plan to make sure it meets all the criteria to be accepted. And then um, I believe town council probably weighs in before they make any movement on that. And then they'll uh, refer to the planning board before a final decision. The planning board will make a recommendation and then they'll recommend whatever they recommend for town meeting. I remember leading up to special town meeting, there was some timeline that was, um, we couldn't meet. That was to get the plan submitted. The so plan they submitted. had, yeah, they've so they hadn't planned, now. they hadn't submitted the plan at right. that point. Right. So now basically they've submitted the plan. So now the select board just needs to refer it back to the planning board. What the problem was at the special town meeting is they had to submit the plan by a certain time for the select board to have it on their agenda and then refer it back to the planning board to then get back to the select right. board. Right. There wasn't enough time to do so that. That's the only, that's the only thing. And Correct. they have the plan. When did the plan get submitted? Uh, I want to say January 28th. January 28th. So plenty of time for the select board to um, to consider it before town meeting. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, is there a possibility we can get we can find out when they're going to have it on their agenda? And I, I think this will be a little controversial, perhaps at town meeting, and that the more we can have done before, even though you're saying we could do it after, it's the more I we agree. get done before the town meeting would be done better. Ahead of time, uh, um, the better, obviously. I hope it's not controversial. But. Yeah. Um, anything else that is on our agenda that people want to speak to? So not to open a can of worms, but Go um, the uh, light traffic light at yeah. Lakes Farms Road North and East Main Street yeah. is currently moving forward. I doubt they're going to get it done by the deadline, considering we just got notice from Roy that the base of the lights has a five month lead. It was either one base with a five month lead time or a base with an eight and a half month lead time. Um, he's going with the one with the five month lead time, but that was last week. So I doubt they're going to get it done by March. Um, at that point, there's really nothing in the decision that says there's anything enforceable. I guess they could be considered not complying with the conditions if you want to go that route. Um, but they are moving forward and there has been back and forth and a lot of this time has been taken up just by reviews and um, beta trying to the one thing that was a hold up is the traffic signal the illuminated traffic signal coming up before the uh, traffic signal to allow it to notify people that the signal is red when it's red um, and we finally worked through that they went with beta's recommendation and now they're moving forward with ordering all the parts so we knew that the, the pieces were had a long lead time. That was part of the discussion. I'm wondering why it's holding us up at this point because they couldn't he couldn't order them until the design was. Yeah. Okay. So I think it was a manufacturing process. Yeah, but we knew that we knew this months ago, right? right. So if so they had been ordered months ago, they'd be on their way, right? right. So the, not to defend that part because I think that makes sense. But it, what he had talked about was the mast arms took a certain amount of time. And what he was bringing up before us last week was the bases of the lights. Well, the mast arms are hardly any use without the bases. Correct. He probably could install the mast arms without the bases and then maybe put them. I don't know how it works, but I'm just, like I'm I said, just, not, an this is, not an yeah, excuse. No, I'm, I, you're not responsible for this. I'm just thinking that, you know, if somebody was really intent on meeting a deadline to put in a traffic light, these are some things that could have been taken into consideration. Ask a question. Do you by chance know if Mr. McDowell is current on his payments to the town? 
I don't believe he is, but I'm not. Unless something came in in the last month or so. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think that that is on our agenda, or it's necessarily our. I don't mind the question, by the way. Um, so I don't also don't necessarily know that it's our purview, although it's an interesting piece of information to have. I, guess I agree. I will just point out, though, that it's going to be brought up at town meeting when we're discussing anything related to legacy. 100%. So getting as much done and wrapped up would be better, uh, including the payments. So. Uh, what about, uh, I know something went around about uh, potentially renegotiating the host or, or studying the impact with that pertains to the host community agreement. Was there any update on that? Or should we put no, that on the... No, I think it's just um, we're talking about, and I'm tangentially involved, um, just talking about uh, possible do analysis. But How to, what kind of analysis to do? Right, and if it would be beneficial, and I believe okay. growth study committee might be involved. Or what why don't we, we should have a, we should have a clump of legacy farms things. We have most of them. Why don't we have that um, analysis on the agenda to be discussed at any time um, so that we can keep track of that as we're moving these pieces around. Can I ask um, another legacy farms question? And, uh, yeah, one second. And I think um, Amy and Gary are totally on point that at town meeting, anything we um, try to accomplish, um, there are going to be questions that center around all of these things. Just quick statement, correct me if I'm wrong, but Osmud is on hold until further notice, correct? What? Is that What do we vote for that Ken Weismantel what? said the zoning or was it garden apartments? Something garden apartments. Garden apartments, not Osmond. Okay. It was yeah. garden apartments. Garden apartments. Okay. There, there's a there's a there's no more garden apartments By until yeah. something happens. Okay. Right, right, that's what I was thinking of. Thanks. I have a question. Uh, it's on the agenda. Um, do you have any additional information, John, about the uh, West Main Street, Lumber Street intersection? No, I've talked to Dave, and he, again, doesn't know what he wants to present, so I've kind of just left it at this point, but I can follow up again and right. see if present to us, you mean? Correct. This is Dave. Del Torrio. Yeah, okay. When is All Town going to start? Any ideas? Sorry. The new gas station. Cliff, Cliff's house. Maybe they'll forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they won't even have to do it. <laughs> Oh my God! It's just the thing this town needs. I remember you saying that, Dave. Oh, I got to say. Are we supposed to do something in Hopkinton? <laughs> <laughs> I have another agenda question. I just yeah. I don't know. This is a question for for Amy. But is there anything? Would it be worth adding the growth a growth study update onto the agenda um, for um, the next sure. couple of meetings? Yeah. yeah, I don't know why not. And maybe just it. It could be just once a month if we you know if we have a busy meeting we could skip it or something. Yeah. I'd love to see that. I think, again, especially yeah. in terms of in preparation for, for town meeting, I think that's something that is worth all of us being well informed sure. on. Sure. Um, I agree. Okay. What is your next growth study? It's, coming it's actually this Wednesday. week, Wednesday. Yeah. And the fire and police are going to come to speak to us, and then we're going to. I just wrote the agenda yesterday. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what else is on the agenda. Well, we're talking, we have a town meeting, placeholder articles. So are you guys going to kick anybody out of town? Like, I don't have to worry about getting kicked out, do I? <laughs> we'll always have to worry about that. Um, and and uh, the Growth Study Committee plans to present as well at town meeting to give a little update great. on what is going, which I think it makes a great deal of sense. always have solar panels. All right. Solar panels could stay, but I have to go. Can um, I move to adjourn? Uh, yeah, any, you know what? Think, think, think. Any future agenda items? Since we have a few minutes, does anybody want to put anything on the agenda coming up? Do we, we talked about the uh, highway uh, overpass and impacting um, Fruit Street? Yep. Do we have a? Do we need to track that? Do we have a timeline? Do we know when the roads? Which be which way to mark the intersection? Is that the four ninety five ninety intersection? Yeah, the four ninety five ninety and the impact of Fruit Street. Like, but but before so that, there's the bridge replacement. So I just emailed John tonight South about Road. that. Good. What, what about, I asked him if he can get us the schedule of the bridge over the railroad tracks on Fruit Street. That's happening first. Start, yes. Yeah. The start and stop, and also if there's any plans to close the street. So oh. they're not planning on closing the street. They're planning on having a signal. And one lane open at all times. Okay. Thanks. Did that bridge work the first project? I want to say it's going to last about two years. I don't know when it's going to start, though. Oh, mercy. <coughs> they have a website 
but I don't see anything coming up for the bridge or not. You're for the four nine five ninety. Single yeah. lane should be okay because it's everybody goes one way into Framingham, Boston in the morning, and then they they come back, so it should be fine. And they're all timed. They, they work pretty well, actually. What's timed? Those traffic. Oh, oh the, the construction long. ones. You know what? I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> 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 I, I have every confidence, and it's going to be thrilled. So now I'm a little concerned because if it was a manual thing by a person, I thought no, it would work. No, it's automatic. It may, it may not work. They don't get the time. It's going to be awesome. I'm not worried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you and me. You and me. As it relates to just town meeting um, and the growth study committee, and the big thing is going to be uh, the p impact the planning board has on the growth of the town and school budgets. School budgets is going to dominate uh, town meeting, and the impact of the planning board can have on proactively trying to pr reflect the growth or manage the growth. So any discussion we want to have about that in this meeting as opposed to just the growth, or maybe the growth study update is enough. But uh, that, like, I don't see any way that the town meeting doesn't, that isn't the number one topic, so. Yeah, um, I don't disagree. I think that the growth study committee is the place to, is the mechanism we have chosen to um, utilized to address it, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be prepared to speak to it as we're going forward. Now, I've been trying to go to their meetings, and they're very interesting. And I think they've been doing a really good job of incorporating EPW and infrastructure um, analysis, and I, th I thought the last meeting was very, very interesting. Mm. And traffic, uh, you know, so I think they're doing a really good job incorporating not only the schools, but trying to incorporate the total package. I wish we had a magic solution, which we don't, of course. <laughs> and it's turning that, which out to is, be a very complicated yeah. and complex issue. And yeah. I give them a lot of credit for taking this on. Um, and I think um, some of that, it would be interesting to hear what the town decides as far as um, impact study and analysis as well. Oh, is that something they're thinking about doing before town meeting? I or? don't know. I don't know the timeline for that. And I don't okay. know if before town meeting to get approved or anything like that. And I think okay. also tonight, for anybody interested around the table or if they're still watching at home, the school is presenting something tonight. Right. Something tonight about the results of their um, their analysis, their study on enrollment. So. Can we maybe add one agenda item for the future for um, the length of cul-de-sacs for open space? Just to. I mean, because right, just to give somebody some background for traditional development, it's 300 feet, but for open space, it's 1,000 feet. So maybe we could at least have a discussion mm. how people feel about that. Yeah, so that, that would, would be for Zach to look at. Yeah, question. exactly. But we, could, yeah. but we can discuss it first, right? To, to just I agree to add to that point, like more of a general, I, I'd like to expand it to like open space developments have some leeway, well, leeway is the wrong word, but uh, less stringent zoning requirements. There's trade-offs, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's trade-offs, and sometimes it results in negative plans, but from my opinion, negative plans put before us. And I think we should be, like, take a proactive stance, like, looking forward, and we might not get it done, we might not get it done right away, but over the course of 2020, I think we could make headway and present that, give that information to Zach, and, and start that process of, like, an open space development, like yes, there's the straight offs, but when you look at this, you compare various plans, some of the trade offs are not, in my opinion, not worth it. Yeah, no, I know we, st we struggled with that one pretty mightily on, on uh, Whisper Way, which yeah. could be a really cute little development, and they were caught up in a lot of challenges. Yeah. It, was, it was, yeah, it was interesting because they had the cul de sac, and then I thought we kind of convinced them to go with the U shaped road, and then they completely built out on that. It's not, you know, as as um, as properties get more complex, as the ones that are left to develop get more complex, um, it probably makes a lot of sense. And I don't know what the me I don't, you know, I don't know what the mechanism is to uh, to build in some kind of flexibility that doesn't also tie your hands in ways that you aren't interested in too. Yeah, because like just I was reflecting back. Kind of show, I, we probably shouldn't be discussing it's this because it's not on the agenda. Okay. We can add it to a future, future agenda, future but future agenda. it's now becoming a discussion. So, and I don't think that's appropriate. I, 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 I do. I, I, I'm wondering if we can, if I, if we can add the open space subdivision bylaws to our agenda for the future. Yeah, it's a discussion Second. item because I, I, yeah, leave it at that. 
Would that be something more appropriate to be before Zach initially and have planning board members attend that meeting? I think it would be for sure. No? I think it's our purview as planning board to top up plan. Yeah, I think we should have an agreement how we feel about it before we present it to Zach, is my opinion. So just a brief discussion, then send it to Zach. Is that what we, we, Yeah, that's okay. my take. You know, either we want to that's move, fine. Either yeah. move forward with change or don't move forward with change. Because, because a lot of times at Zach, we discuss, you know, is planning board interested in this issue, you know, and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's it's really because we're an mm -hmm. arm of planning board. Mm -hmm. So, And I'll just throw out one more, too, and we have been uh, completely derelict about this, and I'm sure I am on the MFTV. We really have to talk about we take a walk through that master plan and look oh, at the action items at the end. The yeah. action items. Oh, yeah. um, and get a little serious about that. Um, so I don't know that it happens. So you said a couple agendas coming up were wide open, John? They tend to be, and then they fill up. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, let's, but let's carve, let's carve, uh, let's carve one out in, in a month's time and, um, and notice the planning board members so we can take, we can take a personal walk through the master plan and the action items before. And please include Dave Del Terrio for that discussion of West Main Street and Lumber Street. You and I can connect. So Mary, just so you know, I was taking, Mary, I was taking a bunch of notes. As I've been going along the last three or four years about things for the Zach. I have five of them on here, but I'm taking one off now, solar, because hopefully we're going oh. forward with that. Well, I don't know if you want to take it off till we vote. <laughs> right. No, I'm optimistic. Would you like to share that with us? <laughs> Maybe you send me the list? Yes, yeah, send us the <laughs> list. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're going to have a discussion. Work on it. Yeah. No, I mean, add Zach. Because she could have worked on it this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never followed through. I just, I just pulled the trigger, you know? I said, All right. maybe the list isn't complete yet. We have, uh, we have continued this discussion far longer than we needed to. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Awesome. What are the dates in March, John? Ninth.